And here we are once again. <laughs> it feels like I'm doing this new every single time. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign. Uh, hosted by me, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, but I am joined by my players. We're going to introduce themselves, starting with, uh, on my left, with Silas. Hi, uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Mash, the uh, illusionist. I am me. <laughs> and he has cat problems. <laughs> she's, she's fighting with power cords. You're up, Annie. Next up. TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Ooh. Uh, you're up, Annie. Uh, my name is Murray, uh, also known as Concerned Cat Mom, uh, and I'm currently playing Annie, who is a rogue. Hey, and I'm Nax, and I'll be playing uh, Medrag, half orc cleric. My cat is currently behaving behind, right behind the laptop. Let's hope it stays that way. Just realized there's cats everywhere. It's, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Well, welcome to this uh, this alt game. I guess I keep calling it that. Uh, game set in the universe of Omasha, the one that uh, I've created and continue to uh, muck about with now for nearly four years. An alt game. For those of you who might have joined us for the other game, this is a game where only three of my players could make it, so we decided to set it in an entirely different uh, part of the world, in an entirely different part of the time, 1,000 years before the current events that are going on, taking place mostly, at least so far, on the west coast of Escus, under the kingdom of Alaria, near the small town of Ailthwater and the small isolated bay of Silver Moon Bay. How do I remember all that stuff? I have notes in front of me. Also, some of that I've just reviewed. Uh, speaking of review, what happened in the previous session? In order to satisfy a request from his father-in-law wish, Silas and the group rented a wagon to deliver the strange, heavy, round container the blacksmith had built for the Cold Pack Lighthouse. The object looked nothing like they'd ever seen like anything they'd ever seen before. Bands of metal in a cage surrounding a solid round core. The core had several strange spouts, and arcane symbols were pounded into the surface of the metal. Traveling on the disintegrating old coastal road that leads to the lighthouse, the group discovered a courier wagon lying broken and burned on the side of the road, as well as the dead body of the courier. There was evidence that they were ambushed by archers from the woods next to the road. While they gave the courier a proper stone cairn burial, they discovered an empty internal pocket where they probably carried the mail, and a somewhat scorched but apparently missed package of expensive herbs and coffee. The group arrived at the lighthouse which is a squat building attached to a tall stone tower. The lighthouse was perched on a small stone island, surrounded by, at high tide by ocean water. Within, they met the Frey family, Elder Angus, his daughter Harriet and her husband Jonas, and their kids, teenaged Esther and young Henry. The group were welcomed uh, warmly by all but the surly Angus, and invited to stay for dinner while they waited for the tide to come in, which would enable the device to be loaded on a rowboat and delivered more easily. Jonas was a tinkerer and explained how he hoped to use the housing that the blacksmith had given him to improve the lighthouse. He eagerly took the group for a tour of the lighthouse, showing how its center was a strange glowing stone slowly rotated by a windmill in the ceiling. Three barrels of water, oil, and grease fed into the mechanism at the center. His plan with the new device is to use some of the power of the stone itself to drive the mechanism freeing it from having to use the somewhat temperamental windmill. Meanwhile, Annie chatted with Esther about the book the girl was reading. It seemed to be a historical romance about the kingdom of Icro, but proposed some rather odd ideas, such as the notion that the kingdom of Alaria was once taken over by the smaller Icro, and that the royal family today is not an unbroken line, but is the family of the king and queen of the smaller island. After a pleasant evening, the delivery was completed at high tide, and the group traveled back along the road. Just as they neared the bend in the road at the edge of the Silver Moon Bay, however, they were shocked mm -hmm. to see the brilliant light of the Cold Pack Lighthouse wink out. And with that, we turn back to the present tense of the game. You have turned the wagon around. The wagon is now empty, and so it can move a lot more quickly. Presumably, you would actually ride in the wagon now. Uh, it's a little bit cramped. Um, Silas, you may be riding on the back of your horse. Uh, your horse's name again? 
You're also muted. Blondie? Ah, that was it, yeah. Blondie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a chance to uh, revisit the last episode. By the way, uh, yes, the last episode was was put up today. I uploaded it on Tuesday and forgot to hit the publish button. Very important tip to all of you out there, hit the last button. Right. As you run... Uh, sorry? Uh, no, Silas would be walking. walking. He wouldn't want to put too much pressure on, on riding his horse and having it pull the car at the same time. Okay. So. That will be slower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as you uh, make your way back towards the lighthouse, and once more it comes fully into view, you can see by the light of uh, mar uh, Marina, full and bright tonight, Maria still below the horizon, that the lighthouse you can see sort of outlined a little in the light. And where you expect to see the bright light at the top, uh, it seems to be at first completely dark, and then there are small pinpoints of light as though we're trying to escape from the dome. The dome itself seems to be black, and in fact glistens somewhat in the strange light. Um, closer still, gathering on the beach, but not quite all the way around, uh, Medric and Silas, I believe, can make out uh, the edge of motion on the outside on the deck where um, Angus had been standing previously. There seems to be a humanoid figure. You can't quite you know, make out details from here. Um, it looks like it's pacing back and forth. Um, almost like it's on guard. It's bigger than Angus for certain, so it's not him. Uh, would, and Angus was just about the biggest of the, of the family that you'd seen there. But making out details from this distance is quite difficult. Um, How far away are we? Still several hundred uh, feet. Okay. So you're just making out a little bit of detail. And you can catch that little bit of motion, but not much more. Um, hmm. How close do you approach and how quickly? Um, 120 feet. I mean, I still have dark vision, right? From that staring into the light. <laughs> You yeah, I mean, prob probably, probably, oh, um, I mean, probably just slowly. Uh, yeah. As you get closer and closer to the beach, it is made up of cobblestone, or not cobblestone, but small stones, river stones, essentially, or water stones. And uh, why don't we actually switch to the map at this point? I need to find my map. What do I do with my map? There it is. Where did it go? It's one of those things, right? All these windows. And now I need at least a third screen. <laughs> All right. And I will add... I need at least another 15 feet of monitor space. You ever see some of those monitors? They're, they're fantastic. The ones that are about... Uh, I don't know. Hundred feet wide. That's what I need. I mean, I was using a TV, and I can tell you, it doesn't help. <laughs> uh, I want to be surrounded by monitors. All right, uh, I've got you kind of coming in on the lower right-hand side of this map. And I realize that I have to move the other map. And then once you get off of the main road, it's mostly this sort of loose stone. There is a, a road kind of approaching. I don't have your wagon or your horse on here, so you'll just have to imagine. But as you, as you move uh, closer, you hear a hissing sound from the woods, which edge. And, and you can kind of imagine that the lower, the southern border of this map uh, is where the, the tree line essentially is. But you hear from off on the side, st, 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 trying to attract your attention, apparently. I'll look over. Um, you can easily see just on the edge of the trees, although somewhat hidden, uh, the little boy, Henry. Uh, and he seems to be gesturing over to you um, quite eagerly. Uh, I will try to quietly get out of the cart and hop, hop over. Yeah, we can just 
I'll I'll stop the cart and inspect the horse. Okay. Something weird's going on. The horse looks skittish, um, but that might also be picking up on on your emotions as much as anything else, uh, and and nervous about what's going on, or perhaps the hissing from off to the side. Andy and Medrick, you walk over towards the uh, yep. towards the edge. You see, and yep. en- you see Henry there, soaking wet, and uh, eyes wide. Um, he looks terrified. His red hair is sort of plastered down on his head, uh, soaking wet as well. I'm so glad you're here. The bad people came. Which bad people? What happened? I don't know. I was kind of asleep, but I had to go take a leak. So I kind of went outside and I saw some people, some bad people floating in the water. I went inside to go take a look and then they came up out of the water. They're weird, like monsters. Can you describe them? Well, I didn't take a close look. I, I kind of dived off the side and swam away. But I think they went inside and hurt hurt Grandpa. They were That's tall not... and kind of green and kind of black and kind of scary. Hmm. Do I recognize, like, any of these monsters? I mean... That's a pretty vague description. Yeah. <laughs> you said they I mean, were floating. Were they floating? <laughs> um, what was that? Sorry, Mr. Oh, uh, black and green. Uh, um They had they had they look like big fish people. I think they're sea devils. That's not good. Um Grampy told me stories about them, but he said they hadn't been around for a long time, that they were all scared of the tower now. But they didn't seem scared. I'm scared. Was that after the light went out or before? He kind of thinks, I, I don't know. When I dove into the water, it, it was all dark. So I guess mm-hmm. after before i don't really know and you said they were floating were they, were they floating in a boat or just floating on no, their own they were like swimming but they were swimming better than i can swim and i can swim one pretty pretty good okay uh is, is i gonna be okay we're gonna go check um i want to um get the kid to climb up in a tree uh, to try to get him off the ground and in a safer place. Um, what about your horse? I can take care of your horse. He likes me. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I look over at the, the person that's uh, pacing uh over there do they seem to see us just a quick check here you can just barely make them out um in fact hey i can do this now i spent some time actually making uh uh some character sheets does not appear to notice you very much does not appear to notice you Seems to be pacing okay. back and forth, though. Um, yeah, let's just guide the horse off. Uh, would the wagon go in there, or would it be too uh, clunky and big to go into the just into the woods? It would take some care to do it, but there are gaps between trees. It's not that thick right up next to the beach. Okay. I'll try to do that then. Uh, lead it just a little ways into the woods. Okay. Um, or calm it down, give it some sugar. Uh, Henry seems sort of attracted to the horse. Uh, walks over to it and kind of begins patting its neck. And you get the impression that the words he's saying are, are half for himself. It's like, they're there. It'll be okay. Grampy will be okay. It's all right. It's, these nice people are here now. Yeah, he says, and I'll 
uh, bring myself down to his height and uh, say, um, no, we'll go check on your family. Uh, but you make sure to take care of Blondie. Uh, Blondie gets scared easily, so might need some hugs and some pets. Uh, you can climb up on top of them. And he kind of, you know, wipes his nose probably as much from the, the concern as the actual still seawater that's sort of on his skin. Okay. Thank you. It's okay, Blondie. And he starts leading the, the horse and cart a little further in. Uh, as he goes a little bit further in, I would like to put some ball bearings on the edge of the, the forest here. Okay. Just to knock them off balance, maybe, if they do end up going in there for him. Okay. It's not really that smooth and solid a ground here. It's mostly um, loose uh, loose rock and, so and soil. The, the okay. arguments of the road are pretty so, much gone at this particular point. So it would already be hard for them to get there. It's already pretty rough ground, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone got a blanket? Because this kid is covered in water and it's nighttime. Uh... Actually, um, once he's in there, I'll uh, put him up on Blondie, and then uh, I'll wrap him up in the uh, the performing robes I've got. These are too big, and he kind of looks like a shrunken version of a of a normal person inside these large. Robes. I don't put the, I don't put them on him. I drape them over him. Okay. I wrap him up in them. You can see he's starting yeah. to shiver a little bit, so he kind of mm -hmm. uh, pulls the robes tightly around him. Then kind of lies down on Blondie's neck and kind of gives him a, a, a big hug. There you go. Blondie likes that. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Uh, if you feel like taking a nap, go ahead and and uh, and do that. The robes should keep you warm. Okay. Now, huh. I could make a fire to keep you warm, but that would give away your position. Um, You're still experiencing that, that, that aftershock of having seen the light directly to Medric, by the way. So what? Your, your eyes still glow slightly, and you can you have the the extended blind or extended um, dark sight or dark vision. Can I make out any details about the creature that's pacing back and forth on the dock or by the lighthouse? It's still just outside of your easy vision, but you can make a perception check. All right, perception. Character sheet. Scroll down. Yeah, un unfortunately, from where you are, all you can really make out is it's definitely tall, taller than you even. Um, kind of uh, humanoid, definitely from the way it moves. Although you kind of get the sense that it it, it looks like it has a tail. Um, as you are watching, a second one comes out from the door, a smaller one this time, and kind of moves over to the first one. You can hear the echo of voices as they are communicating. Um, it sounds sort of guttural and wet in the way that they're, they're, uh, they're speaking. It's like it's, it's um, a language which doesn't suit being heard in open air very well. It's, it's uh, I don't know if I can approximate it, but and kind of flowing into its uh, itself. It sounds uh, like you trying to talk in water. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the same sort of effect, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it kind of echoes off of the hard side of the building. Um, 
from this distance too, you can make out little pinpricks every once in a while in the uh, in the light on the far dome overhead. After this discussion, I guess you might say, the two of them switch places, and the one that was pacing goes inside, stomping in. The other one now standing outside, the smaller one. Mm hmm. Hmm. It's not going to be easy to get close without being seen. Yeah. At this point, the tide is about halfway, so it's about five feet deep in the deeper areas that are indicated here. It's just ankle deep on the beach itself. Okay, so so it's not really. I need to swim. No. Much. You could wade through this part that's that's here until you get into mm -hmm. the more deeper areas out there. I don't know if you can see yeah. where I'm indicating, but... Mm -hmm. Henry, uh, are there any other entrances to the lighthouse? Um, Henry, uh, kind of a little sleepily from underneath the, the blanket. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a door around the back and on the other side on the docks. There's a dock on both sides. The one in the back is almost always flooded, though. So I only use it for boats. Hmm. Oh, I, I suppose if you were small like me, you might climb in the outgatter, but that's kind of disgusting. I did it once because I wanted to see where it went, and it was kind of smelly and awful. Gross. Now look, is there any like debris floating around by any chance? Um, how much are you going to, are you just looking casually? Yeah, just casually. Because what I'm thinking is like, make a if there's like logs check. and stuff floating around, I can just, we can just like each grab a log and like walk behind them. So we just look like debris until we're like right next to the ladder. I just have to imagine you holding a tree in front of your face. I'm just a tree. I'm just a tree. <laughs> I'm a big log. <laughs> uh, there's some driftwood that you will see uh, spread across the, the beach, mostly uh, up towards the edge of where the water becomes deeper. It kind of gets lodged on the stones as it comes floating in. But there's, you know, different bits and pieces of, of driftwood here and there. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if we pick up some driftwood and hide behind it, maybe they won't spot us. Hmm. I mean, considering that it's ankle deep until we get fairly close. Uh, yeah, I, th I think there's two options. We can head for the deeper water and try to swim around back. Or I could make one of you invisible and you all notice as the one that's pacing the outside comes to the edge of the dock looking in your direction and looks to be kind of peering off you get the sense that maybe it heard something more than saw it although marina is full and, and lighting up the beach i am going to make a uh, illusion of a kitty cat wandering around the beach <laughs> like easily jumping up and attacking a fly or something okay um make a performance check and see how realistic a cat this is find my character sheet there we go wow what do you do you know cats and soon enough all of you see this little cat Apparently following the same motions as uh, Silas's fingers as he kind of directs it to move. Um, kind of, I suspect because you did so well and you're kind of looking at it, that the cat will come close to the water, but then shink back from the water. Um, and then Yeah, I can't do sound with it. So, yeah, so uh, you see the, the, the creature kind of looking out in that direction and now kind of watching the cat. Let's see, actually. Uh, it's going to... 
You see it kind of hefting its spear, contemplating catching a small meal. Probably. Bastard. Oh, that could work. Okay. Sure. Uh, it's just doing that. I will prepare to cast Minor Illusion so I can do a sound. Uh, if it decides to throw the spear at the cat. Hmm. Do I have... I don't happen to have a cat on hand, so... We will just pretend there's a cat. Um, it seems to contemplate a bit as the cat moves around. Um, you can see it's it's attention focused, um, but not really make out anything from this distance. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna watch. Uh, yeah, the cat can only get about uh, oh, there we go. About this close because the maximum range is sixty feet. All right. So we'll kind of hang out around there. The little pinpricks of light that were piercing through the inky blackness at the top of the dome wink out. That's not good. Well, the cat seems to have his attention. We could move closer, and I'll just keep the cat moving 60 feet in front of us. All right. Fair. Keeping in mind there isn't much cover on the beach. Uh-huh. Okay, where are you moving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, I guess just towards the, uh... oh, I don't think I can move my thing. Um, there, I'll make the just... hyena a cat. Uh, let me just ch check to see if I, I, I put you on here that I don't actually make you, uh... you should be able to. Yeah, I don't seem to be able to select myself or the cat. Uh, well, the cat I just added, so I haven't had a chance to do anything yeah. with it yet. Um, but let's just make sure that... Actually, I will make it all players. Everybody can move the cat. Um, you should be able to... move your character, though. <laughs> do do do. Uh, unless that's changed. Oh, the joy of learning how to do all of this stuff, too. Um, oh, there we go. So, yes. Um, you can... Yeah, you should be able to. I will. You might have to switch the control off of me and then back to me. Oh, has that happened? Is that a thing? Not that I've seen much, but... I think uh, I think I've had it happen once. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't register something. Well, in general, because you guys are stealthing around, what I'm going to say is all of you should make a stealth check. Uh, you will get advantage well, because the the creature you're hiding uh, from is distracted by an illusory cat. Well, that is a nat twenty. Oof. For, oh, we get advantage. Wait, that's still bad. Well, you can't do worse with advantage. <laughs> See if you can move it there now, Pat. Unless you might want to update. I think your hit points are either not listed or... Um, do the rest of you have uh, nope. access to your tokens? Uh, I can't access it because I can't access roll 20 right now. Oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah, I can move my character. Okay. Uh, silly question, but whenever I roll, there's like two numbers that sh that show up. Is that like advantage? Or... Uh, yeah, it always shows advantage. If you don't actually have advantage, you ignore the second number. Okay. There, I've labeled the cat. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So, yes, yeah, so we get a lot of failures there. Um, and you rolled a nat 20? 
I got a nat 20. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not good. Okay. I got a three on my other day. <laughs> that's a lot of single digits. That's kind of surprising. Yo. Uh, okay. Well, um, tell me where you want to go, Annie, just in general, and I can move you. Um, I would like to go to the corner of where the, like, behind the cat near the water. Okay, so roughly there. Oh, you can't um, see until I've moved you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And where do the rest of you want to go? Um... Mm. Well, since I crapped out of my roll, I'm probably going... Uh... Well, there's nothing impeding you from going where you wanted to go. Yep. But I'm figuring I don't move anywhere particularly smart if I crapped out on the roll. <laughs> uh, but he would be keeping the uh, cat moving ahead, ahead of them. Okay. At this distance now, you can start to make out the shape of this creature. And I'm just going to say a cloud happens to part a little bit, giving you a much better uh, vision of its outline. It does appear to be humanoid. Uh, even though it's smaller than the other one, still stands taller than the tallest you, of you, which I th I'm trying to think of as Medric or Annie. Both of you are pretty tall, if I recall. Actually, I think all three of you are relatively tall. No, I am short. Oh, short. <laughs> Medric okay. is tall. Yeah, I think Medric would be the tallest one. Well, even taller than Medric, uh, as you manage to gauge it now against the backdrop of the door that's there. And it had to kind of stoop to come in the door. In part because it has an elongated neck from what you would imagine, but almost no chin whatsoever, as it appears to have a strange, almost snake-like head. But on the sides of its head has two large fins, uh, which you can see kind of moving slowly, matching what likely is breathing. It's a, it's a, it's a large creature. Well, not technically large, technically medium, but a, a, a uh, largish uh, humanoid figure. Two arms, two feet, but you can see both the hands and feet appear to be claws and uh, with uh, flaps of skin in between. Mottled green and gray skin. Uh, muscular, wearing what looks to be sort of clothing, but much more uh, simple, tightly bound to the skin as, to, as well, tightly bound to the body, um, probably not to impede, as you might imagine, someone swimming. It carries a wicked-looking sp spear about uh, seven feet long that has a, a diamond-shaped uh, tip on the end. Looks like it's made of stone, perhaps, or maybe even bone. Um, but the the neck, along with being elongated, ends in a mouth which has a, a wide uh, uh, cut to it, almost all the way back to the very edges of the skull, where ears would be normally, but you see nothing but these flaps there instead. Uh, large teeth. Um, as it kind of looks over in your direction, and starts muttering once again, this time loudly, then reaches to its belt and pulls up a conch, which it then blows. The sound echoes uh, low and deep. Uh, it's three short bursts, uh, and you can hear it uh, shouting now and gesturing towards you. And we'll roll no. initiative. <laughs> yep. All right, and I need to go. That worked as well as expected. <laughs> Remember, well, there's my initiative. If you can select your <laughs> token first before hitting initiative. Oh, uh, does that mean I get the reroll? <laughs> a one? That's just not good. That's just not good. Uh, nineteen for me. Nineteen. All right. And Medrix, you got to watch your total, Medrix. One. What's that? Medrix's total is one. Oh, he, has, he has no dex bonus. Nope. <laughs> oh, wow. No. Not for a cleric. All right. I didn't know if he had... Uh, uh... I don't have a negative. That's still good. <laughs> it's not a zero. Yeah. Hey, these are starting to work properly. Yay. But yeah, if you click your token and in your character sheet actually press the word initiative, it'll mm -hmm. roll initiative and put you in the tracker automatically. Okay. 
starting to get used to some of the um, some of the shortcut keys even. All right, I believe that's everybody. Okay. Um. All right. From within the building, you see another one of these creatures. Yeah, drop down. So, another one of these creatures over the same size as the one that's standing outside bursts through the door and starts charging and then sort of steps off of the edge of the deck, landing comfortably in the water right there. Um, now, do these look like the tritons that occasionally come to the port? No, the tritons have a much more humanoid look. In particular, okay. the tritons do not have the, uh, the elongated neck, the sort of very wide, thick lips with massive teeth, and they don't have the flaps where ears would be. Okay. Uh, hmm. but, but the uh, the Triton the Triton are also much more peaceful. This is a, this. If the Triton were doing this, it'd be a lot less covert. You suspect. Uh, it seems to be moving. Actually, it's going to move again because it can. Uh, and actually charges. Out onto the beach. You can see as it moves, it does indeed have a tail, which it uses to kind of bound, uh, uses it to balance a little bit more on the on the stone. It, it, it almost looks as though it's slightly awkward, and its whole body seems to undulate like a, uh, like a lizard on two feet, almost. Uh, but it seems uh, steadily, steady and still quite intent as it comes charging outward. Could you move the map a bit more to the left? Sure can. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You're watching the collective map. Yes. Okay. I'll try to I'm relying on what the, what the viewer sees. <laughs> I'll try to keep it uh, uh, zoomed out as much as I can so you can see everything until you get closer. But keep reminding me yeah. because I, I'm using two different maps here. So. Yep, it's all good. Okay. Um. It is still dim light. Um, so you're having a little difficulty seeing from where you are, but you can easily make out the motion and hear the sound. Yes. Uh, I, seeing that our cover has been blown, uh, I would like to try to get to a, that creature. Okay. Uh, how far about, I, I can't see the grid very you're, well on you're about, this. You're about 90 feet away from it. Okay. So, uh, I will get... Uh, 60 feet closer using my bonus action. Okay. Oops. Um, and I will, um, about there. ready. Right where, sorry? About there. Yeah. Uh, and I will attack with a short bow. Okay. You draw your bow. Take a, uh, take a shot. Um, probably not. That is, uh, 13? 13 hits. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get to roll my Borealis dice for the first time. My, my, my <laughs> OG. Uh, for not a good roll. Uh, five. Uh, five damage? Five damage. All right, the arrow hits it solidly in the chest. And it seems somewhat taken aback. It didn't seem to... Actually, sorry, roll with advantage. Oh. Because it did not notice you. Uh, the other roll was a one. Okay. <laughs> uh, it seems surprised as the arrow comes and sort of strikes it. I kind of imagine, uh, Annie, you're right in the on the edge of the water. And I have kind of... a sneak attack on that, then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is another nine. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's definitely aware of you now. Uh, but as it as you kind of are moving quickly and swiftly through the water, using the the sound of the water itself, kind of slowly, shh, well, uh, rolling in on the the edge to kind of match the footsteps you're making, you quickly come in, whang, let go of the arrow, and it hits it very very solidly in the chest. You can see it kind of take half a, half a step back 
uh, and kind of refocus as you kind of get the impression it was charging out towards the other two and didn't even notice you were there. Yep. That's what I do. All right. Uh, that's your turn. The other one. Uh, the other one will come out now. Let's see. Uh, and then, let's see. I brought my notebook in the other room. I'll be right back. As all of you see, the large one uh, charge out the door, and then instead of going straight out, turns to its left and uh, leaps off the edge kind of diving into the shallow, but still about five feet of, of water, uh, landing in the water over here, kind of around some of the stones. That's its turn. Silas. Well, let's see. Silas will move closer. Um... Oh, good. Um, hmm. Still didn't really do much, though. Uh, what would be a good thing to do? Hmm. It seems to be quite hurt by the arrow, but also still fairly intent. Yep. Um, hurt it until it dies. This probably <laughs> won't uh, work, but... Uh, oh, I see. What's the range on it? Where'd that character sheet go? Uh... Of course, it doesn't say. Well, um, what the heck? Uh, I am going to try cause fear. Oh, that's insane. That was good. I'm pretty sure it's sixty feet, but. Um, so yes, he will have to make a save. Well, I will open up Xanathar's guide just to double check the range. Yeah, I can look that up here too. Uh, I now have an orange cat to paint. <laughs> Not that I needed one, but... I don't know. There just seems to be a need to have a cat. I think it's... Yep. Okay. The need to have all the cats. There we go. We now have cats. Uh, cause okay. fear? Actually, I'm just going to go with with uh, the cold snap as a 60-foot range. So we'll go with that. It needs to make a uh, reflex save, I think. No, constitution save. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I just realized unless you have a specific thing for the uh, saves, they don't list them on the NPC sheets. All right. I wonder if... Uh, okay, so it's uh, DC 13? Yup. Okay. Let's see if that works. Yup. Ability check... Yeah, it's an ability check if they have no specific save. Okay. So, yeah, you kind of uh, get the feeling that uh, the cold... Uh, what is that? Is that a ray? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, it's... Yeah, it's a frostbite, so... Okay. He flings a little bit of frost at it, but yeah. it resists. You get the impression that it's thick skin is used to cold weather. Yep. Uh, that was your action... Mm-hmm. I don't have anything for bonuses. Okay. Are you going to move? Oh, you already moved. I did. Yep. yep. Alrighty. This guy. Hmm. Hmm. 
this guy is going to move as well. He dives off into the water. And let's see. Yeah. Dives off into the water and kind of uh, hides a little bit behind these stone that's prominent there. And going to hold his action. Medric. I will sprint towards the one that's already hurt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's six squares. Okay, so that's half your movement, or your regular movement, rather. And you can use your action to run again. Yeah, I'm dashing. Okay. And spiritual weapon next to dude. Oh, yeah. Do I have that here? Yep. Uh, nice. I did create something for that, didn't I? <laughs> I think so, yep. Yeah, there was a hammer one. Where is my hammer? Do, do, do. And what was the damage again uh, for... The Ignis Ouchie, like 1d4 plus spell level, or no? The Ign <laughs> Ignis Ouchie. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I believe so. It's... Or was it 1d4 per level? Uh, I forget. <laughs> I, I'm looking up like three things at the moment. I will, um, okay. I have your spiritual weapon, which I presume is basically right beside the thing. Oh, yeah. Give it, give you the ability to control it. Okay. Uh, now I have to look up the thing. Brain, function, half, level. All right. GM stymied for D4 rounds plus internet. <laughs> All right. Uh, let us see what this says. All right. Apologies to Ignis, because I thought I had remembered this offhand, but now you make me question it. I thought I remembered too, and I don't. <laughs> so we're both at fault. Um, that's nope. That's tenth level. Let's back up a little bit. There we go. Um, Oh, this is an old version. It doesn't actually have the corrected ones. I'm going to say it's a D4 plus level. Okay. That's a nicer one. That's that's probably the nicer one. Well, originally, I think it was a D6 per level, so... Yeah, which was um, painful. So, uh, was it rounded up or down? Um, what do you uh, mean? Everything is rounded down, I believe. Yeah, but there's nothing like... to round in the... Oh, for, for, for yeah, resistance, yeah. it's rounded down. That's weird. I thought I had that here. And the spiritual weapon will attack. All right. Go, spiritual weapon. Swing. Uh, is that the 13? Yeah. Uh, that is a hit. It's a D8 plus my modifier, I believe, or wisdom modifier. Yep. Slash. All right. As the uh, the fiery hammer comes crashing down upon it, um, you see it sort of instantly regret having taken a step forward. Uh, it's on its last legs, it looks like, as the hammer kind of crushes into its shoulder. You can hear, um, even from where are you are, you can kind of hear the, the sort of squishing, crunching sound of bones being broken. In the illumination it is of the, sound. sorry, it is a satisfying sound. <laughs> In the illumination of the light as well, though, you do uh, pick out something odd. Um, there seemed to be laced across its skin this oily black tar substance um, that uh, sprays off a little bit. Is it flammable? It does not appear to be, or it doesn't seem to make any different effect. 
Uh, let's see. It's turn. What is it going to do? Uh, mm, both of you heard it. Well, all three of you heard it, actually. Let's see. I think it's going to... I didn't. <laughs> oh, well, you oh, fired at it. Fired. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think it's going to launch its spear at Annie. Just want to make sure of the distance. Mm -hmm. It's going to move a little bit first to do so. And then out of desperation, launch its spear at Annie. Do, do, do. Seventeen to hit. No hit. For four piercing damage. Uh, and then it will lope back. Let's see. Yeah, just gonna get to the edge of the water as it kind of limps backwards, kind of having regretted all of its decisions in life. Uh, Annie, you have a spear that sort of flew, uh, flew at you and kind of caught you on one of the arms, and then it kind of falls to the ground. The spear looks... Oh, sorry, actually. Uh, no, they didn't have a chance to do that. The spear looks kind of primitive, um, mm -hmm. and you can see that the, the head of the, sphere, the spear does appear to be some sort of opalescent stone. It kind of glitters a little bit in the moonlight. But otherwise, it looks simple and lashed together with something that looks a little bit like seaweed, maybe? Interesting. Um, I will take another shot at the one who is hurt. Okay. He's basically got half cover now because he's dove into the deeper water. It doesn't quite completely cover him. It just means his AC is slightly higher. Um, if I go closer, can I get a better shot? Unfortunately, you're still firing mostly into water. The water okay. itself is providing cover, so. Yep. Uh, that one on the rock, is it on the rock? It's behind it, so it's partial cover behind oh. the rock. Okay, cool. That's the smarter of the two who decided not to charge you guys. <laughs> uh, well, that's a natural 18 oh, plus that's five, a hit. so D3. And finish him. Five damage. And indeed, uh, when you fire off this arrow, it kind of hits him squarely in the back and he lurches forward to this and kind of ends up flopping into the, into the water, kind of floating on top of it. And it is now deceased. Cool. Um, I will move a little bit closer to the spiritual weapon. Okay, where do you want to move? How close? Um, I'll move my full 30 feet, um, like as close to the spiritual weapon as I can. So I'll put you right there, right on the other side of the spiritual weapon. It's only about 25 feet away from you. Cool, that works for me. Okay. Um, so I can see the grid on the top side of the map, just in the gravel. I can't see the grid at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's weird. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. I wonder if that's a setting I can change. I think we can change the color of the grid. Ne neon green. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I changed it, but apparently that part of that grid is actually in the... I don't know. I changed it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I can see it a little bit better. Let me do one more thing here. Uh, is that any better? Uh, not very different to what it was like. In the I feel like video. an eye doctor. Is it better now or now? Is it better <laughs> now? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, it, it helps a little bit. I can kind of see now. Try that. Uh, same as the green, honestly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll keep tinkering with this. But in the meantime, uh, I believe... Oops. I can't get to my tracker. Uh, oh, Wait, yes. I want to get out of the gravel. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that means it's this guy's turn. What is he going to do? Um, hmm. He's the slightly smarter of the two. Uh, let's see how far can he do that. Okay. Uh, you see the, the, the larger of the two. Oh, wait. Where's this? Yeah, he can do that. Uh, he he bellows something. Again, you don't really know what the sound is. Uh, and then uh, floats back towards the Yeah, floats back towards the dock, climbs the ladder awkwardly but quickly, and then dives inside the building. And is now somewhat, actually, somewhat difficult to see. Uh, Silas. Hmm. Uh, well, I will move closer. Should be close enough. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll try cold snap again on that guy. On the one the, on the rock. Okay, he's behind the rock, so it will increase his, uh, his chances. Uh, uh, oh. It's just a constitution save. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Okay. Uh, that yep. guy. 13. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 13. Yep, that's enough. Okay. Dies back, back behind the, the rock and the, the cold kind of <laughs> runs over his shoulder. Gives him a shiver, but nothing to be too worried about. Yep. Okay, is that your turn? Yep. Okay, it's up now. Uh, it is going to take discretion. That's the better part of Valor. And let's see. Yeah. You see it dive off into the water and quickly swim away, out of sight. Medric. Well, they're probably planning an ambush. I'm going to use double movement. Okay, as oh, soon as you, much as soon as you movement. yep, as soon as you hit the dark, the deeper water, it will be difficult terrain because, okay. or if you have a swim speed, if you don't have a swim speed, it's difficult terrain. I do not. So, only three squares: one, two, three. And I'll drag the spiritual weapon as far as I can. Uh, as soon as you step into the water, it feels colder than you might have expected. Uh, it sends a chill up your spine as well. And you feel the heat from your eyes actually fighting back against the cold of the water. But you feel that there's some contention there. Some conflict. Uh, Annie. Yes. Um, I am going to go... I will follow Medric. I tried to move you on the wrong screen. Um, <laughs> where do you want to just follow directly after? Uh, yeah. Okay, you'll make it to just right behind where he happens to be as you start wading in through the water. Uh, yep. Um, I will take my bonus action to climb up the ladder. Okay. Yep, that's plenty yeah. of uh, distance. Let's see, ten, twenty. Yep, you'll get to just up above, up on top of the ladder. Cool. Uh, you can make a perception check. Can you get one check. step further if I gave her a boost? <laughs> Unfortunately, you're you're not quite at the ladder. Right. 
Uh, Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Perception mm -hmm. check from Andy, please. Yes. Uh, classic me missing my dice uh, thing. <laughs> and that's natural 18. Give me two seconds. Perception, that is 19. Ooh, right even. Um, you can just make out on the inside of the door uh, the creature is kind of waiting for someone to step through. Cool. Um, I will let people know that there's another one at the door. And I will ready a bow attack for if I see it or any of the other ones pop out. Okay. Uh, let's see, that's its turn. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, okay. And sure. just a reminder that things don't have advantage if they are not seen by me. Things don't because of my feet. Yep, not against you, anyway. Don't yep. have advantage if they're not seen by you. Yeah, attacks against her don't get advantage just because they were unseen. She's got a feet that just oh gets yeah. Hurt. The you wording of feet. that just sort of threw me off. I was like, wait, they 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 they, they don't if they're not the double negative threw me. Um, that's fair. Uh, just a reminder, just because of that. Yep. Well, let's see. It's going to do quick check. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't see it move. Cool. Silas. I'm just going to double move. Okay, you speed on up closer to it. Yep. Let's see. This kind of... uh, This area here is the rocky part uh still difficult terrain uh yes that's basically the remnants of a road that was there yep okay be back there then okay medric okay so am i still in difficult terrain until you step up the ladder which is an additional five feet of movement to climb up the ladder So basically, if you wanted to be right there, it's 20 feet okay. of movement. One, two, three, four. Six. So that's my movement. I'll move the spiritual 11. Okay. There's not much else. There's not much else I can do. You can make a perception check. Okay. But Annie told us the dude was right there, though. Yep, but you're still seeing it for yourself. Is one thing. Okay. You don't really notice him there. You know instinctually he's there from what Annie said, but you can't see him. Great. I'll just uh, stand defensively then, as my action. Okay. Uh, Annie. Yes. Uh, I will step around the corner. Okay. So you're moving in here? Yep. Okay. He has held his attack. He's standing in front of you, the figure you had seen before, but again, this is the larger, uh, more uh, brutish version of it. You know he's there, so it's not really a surprise when he attacks. But uh, again, you're seeing this sort of webbing slash um, coating of dark black ichor that surrounds him. Uh, let's see. He will... Um, he swings downward. You see that he's holding, uh, unlike the spears the others were holding, he seems to be holding some sort of heavy a, a warhammer equivalent. Um, but you can see it's sort of built of, of a large coral on the top. 
and it whistles slightly as he brings it down and strikes at you. Uh, does an 18 hit? An 18 does hit. For 11 bludgeoning damage as uh, the the blunt end, if you will, of the, the uh, hammer crashes into your shoulder. And he makes a second strike. He kind of swings downward, then swings back upward. Uh, you can't make two strikes on a held attack. You can do you take the attack action, and he does two attacks on his attack action. Nope. It, do, it does not work that, that way for players. Hmm. You use your reaction to make a, a, an attack. You cannot use multi-attack for it. You use your reaction to take an action, which is why you can cast a spell. To, to make one attack. Hmm. I'll look that up later, but I'll let it go for now. Sounds fair. I, I've been dinged for that a lot. So. Okay. Yeah. Then he does not make uh, a second strike. Uh, yeah, so I will attack it with a rapier. I will drop my bow. Uh, probably not, though, with a nine. Nine, unfortunately, does not hit. You're kind of rocked by this this hit, and it's kind of bringing its warhammer back to attack you, stab in with a rapier, but it, it easily kind of knocks it out of the way. Uh, I would like to disengage and go further into the lighthouse. Okay. Uh, like, behind further? that barrel. Like, right about there? Like right the barrel. There's, yeah. Okay. You see that the place is in disarray. Uh, it's been thrown up, although I can't really show the different spaces here. Uh, the main table in the middle is kind of on its side here. Uh, you can see the shelves have been turned up. Uh, this is the fireplace here. Uh, the sort of storage that's right there. This is a counter place for preparing meals. Back here was the privy. And along the sides here are where the rooms are. Uh, you can see that the uh, doorways have been battered on. Um, mm -hmm. The smallest one has been broken open. The next one on the side is broken open. This one seems to be still solid, uh, as does this one, but they look like they haven't beaten upon. Uh, you can see kind of lying in the doorway, uh, Angus, um, down on the ground. He appears to be bleeding from his head, and you can see the other one of these creatures has just come in through or just approached the back door standing right beside Angus. Uh, that is your turn. Um, is that as far as I can get into the room? Uh, from where you were, I believe so. Let me quickly check. Uh, ten. I think so, yeah. And, and it'd be another five. You get, what's your movement, 30? 30, yeah. Yeah, you can move another five feet. Uh, I'll move another five feet in then. Okay. Seeing that there's nothing waiting for me in the room. Does not appear to be so. Um, you do s notice that the floor, the sort of uh, stone floor, is slick and damp, and your mm -hmm. feet kind of stick at a couple of points across it where some footprints are. Yeah. All right. What's it going to do? It's going to f follow you because, hey, you're right there. Uh, yep. As it kind of lumbers in, shoving aside the remnants of the inner door that was there. Uh, and uh, kind of growls and howls. You can see that that black ichor also extends to its uh, its uh, teeth and hands. Oh yeah, sorry. One thing, as you no, you didn't do any damage to it when you're close up, right? Never mind. Nope. Uh, as it will once again strike with the hammer. This time it will actually strike twice. Yep. Uh, oof, twenty-four. Yep. That's a nasty hit. Uh, and once more, as it seems to have no mercy. Uh, 16 to hit, though. Uh, 16 hits, I think. Okay. Uh, yes, 15. Uh, I have 11 hit points. You have 11 before the damage? Yeah. Then you have 1. 12, sorry. Or you have 2. <laughs> I'm going to have 2. Two is important. It's more than none. All right. Uh, let's see. It's moved. It's done that. That's its entire thing. Silas, you hear from within this, and he probably makes a bit of a sound when yeah. uh, the nasty uh, sound of the whistling hammer comes flying through the air uh, and uh, probably, you know, backhand some furniture. So you hear some, some wood splintering as well from within. 
Okay. <clears throat> uh, one, two, one, two, three. Right, one, yeah. Four, five, six. Um, oh, actually, no. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one. Two, three, four, five, and that's it for me. Okay, you see the brute kind of standing over Annie, who's looking pretty worse for wear. Yup. Yup. I get nothing. Uh, the at the other end, the one that is moving inward. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay, you can see Sarah, Angus. Um, the one at the uh, back door, which you would have also seen, Silas, uh, it's not trying to hide, and you get a sort of clear view beyond uh, the big guy. Um, seems to be uh, grabbing at Angus and starting to drag him outward. So they'll get just out the door, and you can still kind of see Angus being dragged. He seems semi-conscious. You can, you can make out a red stain in his white hair. But he's starting to wake up a little bit from the the, the action and starting to uh, struggle against it. And you hear him swearing a blue streak, uh, as you quite imagine uh, an old sailor might, uh, as he's trying to push up against this guy, but it seems to have him for the moment. Medric. I'll move up. Okay. I'm just right here. And level two healing word. Um, or cure, cure wounds, I mean. Cure wounds is touch. Okay, so so I'll go here instead. <laughs> okay, you kind of sidled in, shoving through, trying to make sure you can get to Annie. Yeah. And Give her a slap on the shoulder. <clears throat> two, D, eight. In uh, for healing spells, it's I don't take damage when I heal myself, right? But do I still take damage when I heal other people? Yes. Good. So Annie gets back eleven hit points. Bless. I love rolling ones when it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I take one fire damage. Right, a little, little flare up beside you. All right. And, and the spiritual weapon will... The spiritual weapon will attack. That's a hit. The flaming hammer comes down on the brute. Five points. It's black. Uh, and kind of, maybe it's because he uses a warhammer, but the flaming warhammer, aside from the flames, doesn't seem to bother him as much as you thought it would. Although it does actually hurt, hurt him. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, Annie, you're up. Yes. Uh, and you I will too, attack. The, Sort of a cascade of fire flows over you, but instead of burning you, it's Medric's familiar healing. Yep. Um, I will attack the creature with my rapier. Uh, that teetered on a 20, and that was very sad, but that is a 19. <laughs> a 19 is a hit. Uh, ooh, for max damage. Oh, and Medric is beside it, correct? Yep. Yes, he is. So my sneak attack, that is six for the sneak attack, and then eight plus three, so eleven. Nice. So seventeen. Seventeen? Nice. That'd be seven. And I would like to disengage. Oh, hang on. Oh. You stab at it and score a pretty good hit. It seems distracted between Medric and uh, the flaming uh, hammer behind it, although less. it's kind of discounting the hammer in some real, real, real way. Uh, that's when uh, when you withdraw the rapier, and suddenly there's a gout of black, ooey, uh, ooey, yeah, sure, ooey substance. Uh, as it splashes outward, I would like uh, 
Medric and Annie both to make dex saving throws. Yeah, that's like some aliens shit right there. <laughs> That is a 10. 10? And an 18 from uh, Medric. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, 10 for a total of 11? No, 11. 6 plus 5 is 11. Oh, okay. Not 10. <laughs> uh, so Medric saves for half damage, and uh, Annie does not. Uh, so Annie takes three points of acid damage. And Medric, you have a splash that kind of hits along one of your shoulders. You notice that when it hits, uh, it starts to etch into your armor. Uh, Annie, what are you wearing for armor? Uh, I am wearing studded leather under my clothes. Okay. Um, you notice that the the your outer clothing, your probably your cloak, uh, is starting to get eaten through by this acid. It's not terrible at the moment, but it is effective. How much damage do I take? One point. And then you're going to disengage? I'm going to disengage and go to the other side. There are three chairs behind me. I'm going to go to the other side of the last chair. Okay. You dash across the room, skipping around. Uh, the different not, chairs. not to the door, to the, like, there's the chair that was directly where I was, and then the two other ones I want to go to the... Over here? No, right behind where I was. Oh, you want to go behind? Ah. Yeah. Ah, okay. I figured you so, were getting further like, away. No, no, for, okay. further away. Like, at the opposite corner. Like, so, up for, from where I was, up mm -hmm. three, left one. Up one. So, there or there? There. Okay. Yeah. Again, you skip around the, uh, the chairs and yep. uh, uh, carefully avoid stepping on them. There's still a fire burning um, from where they were making their late supper as well as getting ready for the night. The room itself is, is uh, cooling off a little bit from the airflow from both doors being open. But uh, otherwise, there. Uh, this guy standing beside you, uh, Medric, um, let's see, kind of howls with rage. Let's see. Hmm, okay. Uh, and then brings its hammer down on you. You get the impression that because you have a small amount of bleeding, uh, it's actually more enraged than before. Does a 13 hit, though? I don't think it does. Nope. Uh, I got the shield. It's a 19. Okay. Uh, it kind of batters off the shield. It was a powerful hit. This thing is strong. Uh, Clang! It, it just it kind of... Yeah, the, the whistling hammer didn't seem to uh, to connect in the way it wanted to. It... it Cries out in rage once more, this time getting a 19 to hit. Oh, man. Yeah, that hits. All right. And although it hits the uh, the shield, the shield itself kind of batters into your arm, throwing you off a little bit. And then what's it going to do? Uh, I think it's going to bolt, actually. Uh, no, it's angry. Seven? Seven damage, yeah. And uh, I think... Yeah, I think it's going to to circle. Yeah, I think it's going to stay where it is. It's it's not. It's it's kind of it's into it now. Silas, you hear uh, Medric give a little cry of being uh, the first sort of pang, ha <laughs> ha, pang, ow. Uh, well, uh. Starting my movement, I can still see Angus. <clears throat> you can. You can see he's being dragged out okay. the door. He's fighting it, but he's weak. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he's going to get an attack of opportunity on me. All right. The devil brute. Uh, gives a weak handed back, back uh, swing. 16 to hit, though. Ooh. Uh, I think the that's it. Hit. Yes, that's a hit. Probably. Because I don't have my shield yet. Um, or yeah. armor. Sort of a weak uh, a backhand. It sort of catches on you on the left-hand shoulder, pitching you forward, kind of half stumble across a chair. 
but you are still moving. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's all I can do. You step up to the door. Angus sees you coming and kind of reaches out for you. Help me, kid. Help me. And the creature that's hauling him kind of looks up with a bit of surprise in its face. You can see the sort of red frond now being this close to the thing. Uh, kind of ridge that runs along its back. Uh, what do you want with the old man? Sorry, old man. <laughs> Which is not really all that coherent, but... Uh, and that's kind of its response as it proceeds to try to drag him overboard. And this will be contested because he's woken up now. Uh, let's see. Don't have Angus right on hand. Hmm. Unfortunately, Angus is not able to do much from the ground. Uh, and yes, I got the whisper. Uh, and proceeds to basically drag him over the edge and into the water. Sploosh. Uh, and then start to drag him away. I can be really didn't like that sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> She was like sitting all calm on her cat tree, and you say spoof, and then she like scatters. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to do whispers. But the answer uh, is... just slash W, and then probably the player name. Yeah, that's the problem. Is trying to figure that part out. Oh, okay. Or you just say yes up. or no. It it <laughs> pops up. There you go. Good to know. Um. Okay. All right. As it proceeds into the water, Medric. All right. So the dude in front of me is going to get a face full of hammer. A face full of hammer? But it likes yes. hammers. And then a back full of hammer. <laughs> uh, and, oops. Unfortunately, it sort of bounces off of its shoulder. It's got a little bit of coral that is sort of wrapped around as a shoulder uh, pauldron. And it manages to shrug off your warhammer. Okay, then the spiritual weapon's gonna attack it. Hey! But it doesn't oh, see yeah. a spiritual weapon coming from behind. It clongs across its head. What's the damage? Let's see if it's. Bah, it was terrible. Uh, it kind of rings its bell, and you kind of get this this semi humorous moment of flaming hammer, ba boing, <laughs> as it bounces off its head, and it kind of grimaces a little bit, then sort of lurches forward and uh, and screams bloody murder at you. But it's Annie's turn. Unless you want to move. No, I'm staying right here. Okay. Annie, you're muted. Medrick seems to be doing a lot better than me. Um, seems a little more built for this. Yep. Um, I'm just going to... I do have a potion of healing on me, so I'm going to use that. <laughs> so, 2d4 plus 2. Uh, oh, 4, 7, 8, 9. That is nice numbers. <coughs> what's the, what's the old joke? Why, why was uh, 7 afraid of 8? Or why was, sorry, 9 afraid of... of... Seven? Because seven, eight, nine? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was my bonus action. Um, I am going to... I'm not a good swimmer, so I'm going to go back to attack the dude there. Okay, so you step back in beside him? Or beside Medra? Uh, back, back to where I was. The... Okay. You hop back over, rapier out, and thwing. Boing. Uh, parry, thrust, and... 22. Crack. As you stab inward at it. Oh, actually, sorry, one thing first. Uh, from Medric, I need a dexterity saving throw. Okay. 
Okay, unfortunately not quite enough. Uh, as you take one point of acid damage Ooh. from the hammers <laughs> splashing into his head, he sneezed a little bit and this driblet of acidic snot flew out and kind of landed on, on your on your cheek and you're like, ah! Gross. Meanwhile, Annie is bashing away at the thing. Uh, that is uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Holy crap, okay. Well, with the sneak attack, because yeah. he's there. Uh, as you uh, as you step forward and stab, kind of lunging deeper than you had before, the rapier kind of moves into its chest. And what does it look like as it dies? Um, I stab it in the throat. Okay. Uh, you kind of aim upward. Its own momentum and weight kind of carrying it down on the blade. You almost buckle as its weight le leans entirely on the blade, but step back gracefully, letting it slide off the the, uh, the blade. However... It's very is... swift and elegant. It is. It is. But the spurt of blood that's afterwards is not. So nope. you need a dexterity saving throw from both of you? 14. 14 is enough, so it's half damage. 5 is not enough. So, uh, one point of acid damage for Annie and two points for Medric. As the creature kind of writhes and starts to sizzle a little bit, um, its own body seemed to consuming itself now. Uh, and then that was 20 feet of movement, so I will move another 10 feet towards the back door. Okay. Uh, kind of just... Most direct path to the door. Uh, probably right there. All right, uh, that guy is deaded. Deaded. Splat. He is not a thing. Minus fourteen. Loop. All right, take him out of the initiative. Ugh. Silas, you see as Angus is being pulled into the water, he's still floating on top, uh, still struggling, with the creature starting to drag him under. Okay. Um, I will take a bonus action to charge up my staff, and then, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what does the, your charge staff look like? How does it change? Um, I think I've described it has kind of a. I mean, when it when it's first charged, it has kind of a a glowing scaly effect over it, uh, and then that sort of um, it's almost absorbed into the staff. After that, it looks fairly normal. It's a, just a cantrip. So. Okay. Um, the staff is so raised yeah. and wackety. Well, uh, first, uh, what do I need to jump down into the water? Because I don't know how that far that is. Or uh, It's basically five feet down to the water, and then there's five feet of water. So we'll make that okay. an acrobatics or athletics, your choice. That uh, will be acrobatics, because uh, I don't have athletics. Uh, there's my character sheet. Oh, I don't have acrobatics either, but at least I got a point of dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately, you go launching yourself off with a little bit of a battle cry, but kind of catch your foot at the top. You land in the water. Uh, and kind of stand up, sputtering. The water is five feet deep, but you're a little bit taller than that. Uh, you... I'm five six, so it's almost up to my mouth. So I'll say you have a disadvantage on the attack. Um, if you're going to attack. Yeah, actually, I'm going to try and grab Grandpa. Okay. Uh, make an... Uh, uh... I believe that one has to be athletics. Yeah. Badly. Where's my character sheet? Like you're grasping for a, a log to stay on. Ooh, look at that. Hey! Uh, you've got a hold of him, so it'll be... I put my hand in his belt. He's not going anywhere. Well, it's contested, but... Uh... Yep. <laughs> but yeah, you've got a hold of him. Uh, he's kind of barely bobbing above the water, but he is floating on his back, so he's not drowning at the moment. Still kind of struggling to, to move, but... Uh, you can see some of the energy kind of going out of him. Uh, the water. I grabbed his belt. He grabbed his belt, and hopefully his trousers stay up. Um, mm -hmm. That is your bonus move in action. The creature yep. now wants to get away. 
So we'll make a contested athletics check against you. Well, oh, it does <laughs> not is not able to move. Maybe it's because of the the combined efforts of of the old man uh, moving around. Maybe it's just your sheer dead weight of having dropped into the water, but you're <laughs> able to hold it there from moving anywhere. Uh, since it can't move, uh, it tries to reach out and claw you. Actually, okay. try to snap a bite at you first. Uh, let's see if it can do that. Uh, 18 to hit. Yep. Uh, it chomps down on your shoulder. The uh, teeth pierce in. You feel this little bit of burning sensation around. Two piercing and one acid damage. And there's a sort of residual acid on your shoulder as well. And then we'll attempt with one of its hands to claw at you. Oof. Owie. Uh, and it rakes across the side of your head uh, and kind of down your chest. And you can feel this trace of the wounds afterwards. It's probably going to leave a mark. Uh, that's three slashing and three acid damage. Yep. Um, Medric, you hear a commotion on the other end of the room. Actually, outside. It's a sort of splash and then mo followed momentarily by a Bigger splash. <laughs> Ow! Well, then, ah! well, all I can do, I think, is make it over there, unless. One, two, three, four, five. So that's all my movement. Can I see what's going on down there? Uh, not really, because it's five feet below the deck. Okay. You did see um, Silas launch himself off the edge of it. And then kind of plunge in what sounded like a not exactly graceful landing. I'll take double movement. Okay. And now you see the two of them struggling over Angus, who seems to be fading quickly. There's nothing else I can do this round. Okay. But next one will be okay. Annie. You're muted. Sorry, I'm also eating chips. <laughs> Crunch. That's the sound of the creature biting down on uh, on Silas. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> but only, only if it's dill pickle chips, though, because you have to have the acid. <laughs> <laughs> um... I would like to, those two are out there. I would like to check on the closed doors. Okay. You can uh, see that they're heavy doors that have been kind of bashed inward, but weren't completely broken. Yeah. Is everybody else okay? Is that you, Annie? You hear Esther's voice coming from within uh, one of the doors. Yes, there's one. There, there's one left day in there, but I just want to know who's, who's where. They, they came out of nowhere. I think they took my mom. I think Dad went upstairs. I haven't seen Henry. I don't know what happened to him. They might have got him too. Henry's outside. We, we, we found him. He was peeing. Oh, and she kind of laughs a little bit. She tries to open the door, but because it's kind of broken it's kind of lodged in place so you kind of hear her pounding against i can't yeah, get out there, we'll... what was that sorry stay in there a little bit longer we'll we'll deal with what's going on out here okay uh and this then isn't like I will... the stories at all yep and then i will move towards um everything else okay right up to the doorway I'll say from there you can actually make out the struggle going on. You can't really see Silas, but you can see see the creature kind of uh, hooking on or has hooked on to Angus, but doesn't seem to be getting away. Cool. Um, would I do I still have my action or no? I'll say yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to. Uh, shit! I didn't. I dropped my bow. Um, I will grab a dagger off okay. my belt. It does have partial yeah. cover, cover from being in the water. It's only a plus two AC, but... Yep, just a, a regular dagger. Uh, 
That is a 17 on the die, so 22. Yeah, absolutely. And it's Ka-chunk. engaged with Silas, right? Uh, it is. Uh, ooh, that's nice. Uh, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 3, so 13. Nasty. Uh, the dagger kind of flies through the air, uh, and it's kind of moving and dodging and, and tussling with, with Silas, and then as it kind of looks up, er, thunk, it hits it right in the solid forehead, uh, ah. and it kind of screams and uh, and shouts, I would like a dexterity saving throw from uh, Silas, please. Okay. And Angus does not get the saving throw. Uh, you take two points of acid damage, which splouts out, splouts out Splouts? Sure. Splouts out out at you. Sure. Sorry, uh, how many? Two points. Two? Uh, and you also see it kind of spray over Angus, uh, who swears. Uh, it seems like he's not unconscious yet, or maybe this just woke him up again. It's hard to say. Uh, let's see. That is Annie's turn. Yep. Uh, Silas. The creature looks kind of ridiculous with a a. Uh... If you're grappled or uh, if you're restrained, you get disadvantage. You still get the. If you're restrained, if you just grapple, there's no effect on that. You just lose your movement. Okay. Cool. But yes, the creature looks kind of ridiculous with a a uh, a dagger that sort of suddenly appeared in its forehead. It seems to be quite angry about this. Uh, oh, sorry, it's my turn. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Um, well, I am going to attempt to motivate it to leave. Uh, I am casting Dread Gaze on it. Oh so it can uh, make a fear save. Okay. What, Sadly against the 13, but... What, uh, is that a wisdom save? I believe so. Uh, let's see. Let's fear. Uh, well, it got me close to the right spot. There are so many spells that start with C. <laughs> oh, wait, wrong book. That also doesn't help. Yeah, I kind of wish there was a PDF that just had all the spells. I will say, uh, we're not sponsored by them, but D&D Beyond is awesome. Uh, Wisdom saving throw. Yeah. All right. Let's see if it can do that. Against my crappy 13. Well, it's not got a crap. It's got crap to begin with, and it only gets a (laughs) 5. Yay, it is now a feared. So it's got disadvantage on things. Uh... Okay. Other than that, I I just stay there. All right. My grandpa. Uh, it kind of squeals now in desperation, uh, tugging at uh, the body of Angus that it's still sort of attached to. Um, let's see. What is it going to try to do? Um, hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay. I know what it's going to do. I think that's the one I wanted. Is that the one I wanted? Yes. Um, It kind of squeals out in pain. uh, And you see, see it concentrate for a second. And actually, all of you. Uh, can see a fin appear and break the surface of the water uh, just a little bit north of you. I'm using north, by the way, only in terms of coordinates on the map. It's not actual north. It's actually more like Mm -hmm. west. uh, As a fin of a shark breaks the water not too far away. Uh, Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Pardon me, I need to... I'm learning all of these things at the same time, which is always a mistake. There we go. Hey. 
Okay. When it comes up the right place. Uh, and it will attempt to move, uh, but it can't because it's still attached to you and attached to it, so it will strike out at you. Uh, once again, kind of lurching forward with a bite and with a claw. Uh, not actually at this advantage, but also not at advantage, which is the way it goes. Uh, attack, total of 20 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, three piercing, and again, two acid as it kind of rolls out of its saliva. Okay, so what gave it advantage? Because you're bleeding. Ah. Uh, okay. And once again, striking out with the claw, but only a 10 to hit. Yay. Um, I got three hit points left. That's its turn. Medric, you see the shark appear as it's uh, off... Uh, kind of in the deeper water just beyond. The creature itself seems <laughs> desperate to try to get away and tries to strike at Medric, or strike at uh, Silas as it's trying to pull at the same time. It seems intent on trying to take Angus for some reason. Yeah. Well, Silas is going to get some heals. Oh, I thought you were going to hit him. No. <laughs> Not yet. Um, are, what kind of healing are you using? Because keep in mind, yes, he's, he's five feet below Ooh. you. There you go. Sploosh. So that'll be an acrobatics uh, acrobatics check, actually. Okay. Can it be athletics? Did we make it either one uh, just a moment ago, Silas? Yeah. yeah, it was either one. Okay. Yep, it can be either one. Oh yeah, no problem. Douche. Um, kind of, you you fought at sea many times, and there were times when you just had to leave the boat you were on. Nothing different than that. The, in fact, this is easier because the dock is not moving. Yeah. <laughs> and oof, oh wow, good heal. Now, low numbers now. <laughs> Jeez. <Yeah. laughs> I take one damage. That's a very efficient uh, uh, not hurting yourself. <laughs> Yay, I'm further from death. Quite significantly, actually. Spiritual weapon, two, three, four, five. We'll move up to here. Okay. Hovers over Annie's head. Is it warm in here or is it just you? The water is freaking cold. I hate it. And I will grab on to Angus as well. Okay. Uh, well, you already did an action, so you can't grab okay. all this round. Um, yeah, because that's an action to do cure wounds. Okay. But you can kind of make movements in that direction. Once again, you feel the coldness of the water kind of restricting you. And you feel almost as though... For the first time in a while, this water is harder to swim through. You find yourself having to move uh, extra distance at this point in the full okay. moonlight. Uh, that's Medric's turn. Annie, you can see the struggle going on. And an ominous shark fin appears in the horizon. Well, not the reason the horizon, like 40 feet away. <laughs> yup. Um, well, I will jump down and join this situation. All right. Come on in. The water's fine. Fine. Uh, where are you heading to? Like the other side of Silas? Yep. Or, okay. So, again, athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics. Oh, that's a natural one. Ooh, as you kind of face plant in the, in the water, you were kind of belly going flop. for maybe uh, a cannonball or belly, belly flop, it turns into a headstand. Um,. Depending on what you're planning to do, it would be disadvantage to attack or additional. Well, it take five movement just to stand up. Yep. Uh, and uh, I will also try to grab onto Angus. Okay. Gonna dive in. Uh, grab. And I will. Say she seemed to have taken what? What was her name? Helena. Esther. Oh, uh, Harriet. Harriet. All right. Uh, you can make uh, an athletics or acrobatics. 
Athletics <clears throat> is more like you're gripping on with your, your arms. Acrobatics is more like you're kind of wrapping yourself around his leg <laughs> to hold on. Uh, to acrobatics, please. Okay. Uh, th th to, that's a nine. Trying to position your leg and try to find a little bit of a stone underneath to put your foot on. Unfortunately, your foot kind of slips and you're not able to get a good grip on onto Angus. I might need to go get different dice. <laughs> <laughs> They've already been broken. Uh, it is Silas's turn. Um, well, someone stronger than me has got a hold of, uh, no, no, he wasn't able to, never mind. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try and whack the sea devil with my enchanted staff. All right. Beat down. It's a little difficult in the water. Uh, it's not disadvantaged, but it does have uh, half cover. Although I think 24, yeah, not a problem. Jeez, 24. Dang. Wow. And 11 damage. <laughs> All right. Nice. A, that's maximum damage I can do. Nice. Sweet. Uh, as you swing up through the water, the, uh, the staff uh, comes clear of the water and comes crashing down. And how does it end this poor creature's life? I think it should like crash down where right where the dagger is sticking out, but I'm not the one doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, without really intending to, uh, just whack it in the head, and it happens to hit the dagger and drive it home. All right, and the dagger goes squishing on deeper, uh, and uh, the creature lets out a, a gurgling howl and then goes limp. However. There is a splash of this acidic blood. I will need uh, Medric and Silas to make dexterity saving throws. Ooh. Son of a bitch. Hey. Everything's <laughs> <laughs> coming up, Silas. All right. Uh, Medric, you take three points of acid damage. Silas, you take one, and you see it splash over Angus as well. Uh, there's a moment when you can see the shark kind of swimming back and forth outside. But when the creature dies, it seems to sink into the water and travel away. Okay, I'm still going to try and use my movement to yank Grandpa back toward the ladder. Okay. Because I don't know where that shark's going. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe it like went in the water and it's coming right towards us. Um, Angus is, is uh, bleeding uh, badly from the head wound uh, but now sort of released from the, grisp, the grasp of the strange monster seems to be a little bit more himself and is able to kind of stiffly uh, help and you drag him in and presumably everybody is going back in as you see no further attackers going oh yeah and all of you come back in side. Angus sits down in one of the chairs heavily. Um, I try to open Esther's door. <laughs> okay. Um, How bad does, and, and does Angus look? <laughs> uh, Angus looks pretty bad. He's a tough old buzzard. And it's probably likely more that they knocked him out than they were able to try to bring him to death's door. Um, but he's, uh, he's, he's looks he looks exhausted more than anything else. Uh, and kind of sits down heavily in the chair. Um, for the door, I'll need a strength check. Does the crowbar give me advantage? Sure. Uh, that would be um, just a general strength? Uh, athletics, actually. Um, that is a 19. 19. You jam the uh, the crowbar, uh, which you always. Carry. I, I tell Esther to back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Esther backs up clearly because the door, once you've jammed that in, cracks in two. You're able to kind of lever it in such a way we're taking advantage of the place part that's already been sort of bowed inward and cracked inward. You crack it further, and the door kind of falls. Uh, the the part with the handle falls offward, and the other part with the hinge just sort of creaks and uh, and hovers there. Uh, 
you're you're barely able to kind of pull back from from having exerted that when you find yourself wrapped in Esther's arms uh, as she's kind of sobbing into your shoulder, and then looks over at Angus. Uh, Angus kind of uh, uh, spits probably seawater, a little bit of blood. How's the light? Has anybody checked the light? Not we, yet. we saw it from outside. And he uh, sort of tries to stand up, uh, and you can see him kind of wavering a little bit when he does. Uh, grabs onto his head and grimaces. Someone get up there. Make sure that thing is going. I'm I saw go some ships Henry. earlier. I'm going to run up the stairs. Yeah, same. Right. I'm going to go get the kid outside. Uh, Esther kind of goes over to, to uh, fuss on Angus, who uh, sort of growls, but at the same time winces as she kind of looks at his wound. Um, and you hear as you're heading up the stairs, uh, um, Henry's okay. He's outside. But I think they took Mama. There might be more of them up there. And you charge up the stairwell. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if Medrick says that out loud, I'll roll my eyes and go up with them. <laughs> you head up the stairwell. Now, I'm just going to do... Let's see if this works. Uh, uh, uh. Head up the stairwell. Ha, ha, ha. I have the mm -hmm. stairwell. Nice. And depending on where things go, but uh, currently you go to the top. Um, and I'm just going to put the three of you there. Oh, you're still at the sea. Sorry. As you. Yeah, um, you got the. <laughs> there we go. The creature instead. Did I get the creature instead? Yeah, originally you grabbed the creature oh, instead yeah. of that. Yeah. I'm still Is eleven still up? Like it had three turns left when the battle ended. Uh, it would take more than three turns to get up there. It was like a hundred feet up. Can you move the map up a little? Oh, certainly. The the lighthouse is underneath our our pictures. Yee, thank you. There you go. Better. Yep. Uh, as uh, you kind of charge up, you notice that this was a hatch that covered over the top of the stairs. The hatch has been uh, broken off of its hinges and lies splintered off to one side. As you go inside, you also feel weirdly a breeze. Uh, and all notice off to your right that the dome around the top of the lighthouse seems to be melted and corroded in numerous places. And then there's a couple of spots, one in particular kind of to the northeast of the space. Uh, there is a large, almost a humanoid-sized hole that's been burned into it. Uh, across the floor, you can see uh, traces of, uh, of footprints, clawed footprints like the things you saw before, almost burned into the floor. In the center of the room, you see the, the tower which held the light is slightly askew. And light is no longer at the top. As you enter, you also hear a moan from across the room and quickly discover Jonas. Uh, looks like he was quite literally backhanded across the room uh, when he was trying to defend it. Uh, his uh, his uh, uh, sort of glasses lay askew by his feet, uh, and he kind of looks up at you. You can see uh, nasty uh, scratches across his face, not dissimilar in some ways to what uh, what Silas is sporting right now. Uh, they, they, they came through the roof. I, I didn't expect, the, and the floor, all at the same time. I don't understand. I, I don't know what they were. I, I've never seen such a thing, but uh, Angus has mentioned sea devils sometimes prey upon ships on the shore, and I, I can only imagine that's what they were. But they were definitely after the light. Oh, they've taken it. He looks up at the uh, bent tower. Oh, they've taken it, and the tower's bent. I'm going to have to repair that. I didn't get a chance to, to put it in its uh, its new container, so it it came through the wall. It, it sort of, everything went black, and it melted. They took the stone. Yes. Without it, the lighthouse has no light. Uh, there's, we can... I should be able to rig up something to at least give some flame, but uh, it's not going to be as strong. And then he kind of looks at the three of you and then looks at how wounded some of you are. Oh, dear. Are uh, the rest all right? They didn't harm anyone. We don't know where your wife is. What? 
No, 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 no. She's no. for. She may be in one of the rooms. No, 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 no. This can't be. And Esther he... thinks they took him. Her, her. Esther. Esther's okay? Uh, Henry? Henry's, Henry's outside. Henry's outside. <laughs> I think the stars are small favors. Angus. Angus is hurt, but okay. I need to... I need to... And he kind of steps up, stands up and sways a little bit. You can see the, the nasty etching along the wound that he suffered as well. Similar to what you had experienced when they, they had clawed you, Silas. I need to... You, you say that Harriet is downstairs or, or maybe... Or maybe gone... We don't know yet. No, 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 no. And he kind of stumbles towards the stairs. I mean, when I, when I checked the doors, nobody else answered. It was just Esther, right? That's right. Yeah. And he kind of... Maybe she's like elsewhere. And he, he walks over actually to the to the edge of the, the space and kind of looks down over the, over the water. He's not sure if he's expecting to see anything or not. It's right over the same place where this this man-sized hole has been burned through the the heavy glass that's there, or heavy crystalline glass. I'm gonna go get Henry now. Okay, sounds good. We'll just, I guess we're all heading back downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> is there that's, aside from the light, is there anything that's missing from this room? Are you gonna take time to look around? A little bit, yeah. I mean, the main threat seems to be gone now. Okay, make an investigation check. I am an intelligent doing an investigating. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking around, aside from some damage that was made when they came through um, and the damage to the tower itself, you didn't really know what most of the stuff did before. There's a couple of workbenches and different things around the, the space of the room. Um you have no idea if there's anything missing because it all kind of looks like a jumble of parts and pieces. You do see the the uh, the device that you guys brought still sitting on one of the one of the uh, counters there, uh, kind of half uh, half open. It looks like the there's a hinged part of it which was brought open. Presumably, this was the work Jonas was working on at the, at the time when all this happened. All right, you head back downstairs. And uh, we'll just, for the convenience sake, say you convene inside. Um, you find Henry without too much difficulty. Do -do -do, although I can't find him. <laughs> Where did you go, Henry? There you are. Uh, I'll look around and see if I can find uh, Harriet, was her name? Yeah, after a few minutes of coming down, I think with, with uh, probably uh, Annie's use of the crowbar again, you're able to leave her open that last door and no one is inside um, Angus is sort of softly swearing to himself uh, the two bodies are kind of stinking up the room still um, and he tells Esther <laughs> tells Esther to go clear one of them off and she's not going to be able to do that on her own but he doesn't seem to be thinking all that clearly uh, Jonas pounds his hands on the table what happened? Why did they take her? Uh, Silas will be drying the wet people, including himself, with crested digitation, so nobody catches a cold. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Fair enough. Annie, when you went out to get uh, Ez uh, Ezri, no, uh, Henry, uh, yeah. you would have had to go through the water to get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you come back in, uh, he's still holding on to the cloak. He, he tried folding it and putting it above his head, but he couldn't really swim through the five feet of water and hold it at the same time because he's not tall enough. So it comes back in wet as well, the performance cloak. I, I would have grabbed the, the cloak or offered to. Okay. Um, and he, he eagerly hands it to you because he knows he can't do much about it. Um, How old is Henry? Henry's about eight. Okay. bit too heavy to help pick up. A little bit too heavy, especially for you. Yeah. Um, but he's a strong swimmer, it seems. Um, and you kind of regather. Yep. Angus uh, swears. Uh, they haven't come and bothered us for generations. 
I suppose. Yeah, there's many terms for them. Most people around here just call them sea devils. They don't go after the lighthouse. They're not supposed to be able to go after the lighthouse. Not with the light burning, anyway. The light isn't burning. They took it. Angus swears again. Damn. They're learning. Uh, they came for Harriet. Why would they take her? They were trying to take you, too. He kind of looks angry and embarrassed at the same time, if that's possible. Ah, uh, well. Uh, the Sea Devils have had a uh, an ordinary nature towards other folks who live in the sea. And, uh, well, being close to the sea as I am, I was bound to meet with some of the others. Harriet, my daughter, looks a lot like her mother. May she rest in peace. She's been gone a long time now, but I'll never forget the day she washed up on shore. I fell in love right away. I didn't care where she came from. I didn't care who her family was or any of that stuff. She needed my help, and I, I gave her my help. Clarice, the name she used when she walked on land. I couldn't pronounce her other name from her people deep under. I see. Uh, her people, I, I guess, some have called them uh, sea elves. I think that's kind of simple, but I never knew much more about them. And she used to tell me stories of the fights they used to have. Uh, the fights she'd been in just before she washed up on shore with them sea devils. But I didn't think too much of it. And she told me the tower here would protect her from them. As would I. Couldn't protect her from everything, but I tried. Near as I can figure, they came for her. Well, Harriet's her spitting image. They probably can't tell the difference. But how they came to take the, the light, I don't know. They weren't supposed to be able to come anywhere near this place. Speaking of the light, we got to get something burning. There's ships out there. Well, we'd have to re recover the original light. What would they do with it? It's, uh... I don't know. I don't know much about it, really. It's been here forever. Well, it's got a lot of power built up into it. Uh, as I explained, uh, the device that I had made should be able to channel some of the power a little bit more efficiently in, in different ways. Uh, part of its power, I guess, was to protect this place, although I never really understood how that part worked. I can work up a old-fashioned flame. We have, we have oil, and I can work up something that can burn at least a little bit. But I want to know how we're going to get Harriet back. Do you know where they would have taken her, and if she's still alive? Angus kind of shakes his head. I don't, I don't know where they come from. I, somewhere under the water, I guess. I, I, I've never... A look crosses his face. I won't be damned. Uh, Esther, go in my room and fetch the... There's a chest underneath my bed. Uh, in that, there's a smaller box... It's made of a, of a black, shiny wood. Bring that out, would you? And Esther goes into his room. You hear her pull out the, the chest and come back with the box. Ah, almost thought I'd lost this damn thing. And he opens it up. And inside you see uh, something you would kind of recognize a bit, Medrick. Um, it's a, a, a round glass orb. And within the orb, there seems to be some sort of liquid. It's about half mm -hmm. full, it looks like. 
and floating on the liquid on the inside is what looks to be something like a ship's compass. Um, and he kind of pulls it out gingerly. It's about the size of a fist. Uh, let's see if this thing... He kind of turns it around. Um, all of you kind of see it swinging and turning a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it has no markings on it, but it does have a large arrow on one end and smaller arrows on the others. Kind of, again, looking much like a compass rose. Cool. Um, but as he turns it around, um, who's trained in survival? Anybody? Yep. Nope. I am trained in navigational tools. Oh, okay. That's good. I think I am. Um, yes. Medric, you're not trained in survival? No. Or, or navigational tools? Uh, and uh, Annie? Nope, okay. Then Silas is the one that pick up, picks up on it. As it spins and stabilizes, it does not point north. Uh, it does seem to waver slightly, as though uh, pointing at something and then kind of moving and shifting slightly. This was uh, on board the ship a long, long time ago when the star fell. Uh, it was a normal ship's compass at that point, but it seemed to get... Uh, uh, fixed on the stone itself. After that, they used it a few more times to find another stone or two, but it just sort of stayed here with the lighthouse once that ship was retired. Forgotten all about it, but looks like it still works. This thing will lead you right to the stone, and well, if Harriet's been taken by the same, then it should lead you right to them, too. Or, I should Perfect. say, leads us right to them. Um, this just leaves the problem of what if it's deep underwater. Well, that's where they live. They got caves and holes, I guess. Whole cities even underwater. Clarice said something about going to show me where she was from, and, and I guess I would have seen some of it, but it just never seemed to happen, you know? You get into a routine here. Got to keep and the light going. Did she have a way of letting you breathe there? Yeah. Uh, Esther, but where you found this box, there should be another a pouch. Uh, it's fish skin. And Esther goes in, retrieves a small pouch. Uh, I don't know if these things wear out over time. And he kind of upends the pouch onto the um, tabletop. And three... Um, round uh, iridescent small balls fall out. Uh, looks like small pearls. They kind of roll but a little bit upended uh, are upended as they, they kind of have a little little uh, hook carved into one end. I always teased her about these and said they were earrings but she said well they were for land folk like me. I had to use one once wasn't a great experience, but it worked. You just kind of tuck them under your tongue, and they just sort of produce air. It's the weirdest feeling, because it's not you breathing in so much as you're just sort of holding it in. They work for a couple hours. There are other spots underwater you can find uh, where air will naturally bubble up. Keep an eye out for those. I only got three of these. Uh, Jonas, you got to get work on that, on that light. Esther and Henry, we got to clean this damn place up. Because if your mother comes back and this place looks as crappy as this, she'll tear my ear off. <laughs> and you can see he's kind of trying to put on this sort of grumpy confidence, probably for Esther and Henry. Jonas seems to be kind of staring off into space a little bit, but as soon as he's kind of given the, the order to go fix the, 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 the light, uh, he kind of nods absently, and you can hear him kind of muttering under his breath that, well, I'm, I'm going to need to make sure that I can route the oil properly and have the basin land, and kind of already starting to make plans like he's fixated on that. Um, Angus stands up. And kind of as much as I would like to go right now, I think it's more dangerous for us to rush into something like this. 
especially Maybe. because we've been already traveling for a while today. Um, mm. Angus kind of, you know, nods. Uh, maybe it'd be best to go in morning. They can hide at night. How long can the... Uh, if, you, if you make something up to so that the tower gets its glow back, how long will that last? Jonas? Um, well, uh, we have a lot of oil on hand. We always keep a reserve. Um, the... The tower is a little bit crooked. I'll need to readjust it to make sure the oil doesn't flow outwards, but as long as someone is tending it, it should last all night. Um, maybe a, a couple of days if the storms are bad still. Um, and I'll need to get some more oil, but I think I think I'll, I could last I'll a couple. I'll leave days. some extra oil. I have, uh, how much do I have? I have two flasks of it. Oh, it, it needs a little bit more than that. Um, the, the barrels... But a little bit helps. <laughs> It does. It does. Um, it's not going to be of use to me underwater. Okay. I, I think with that and with what I have up there, provided some of it hasn't spilled because they were... You know, I, I, I thought I saw a crack in the barrel when I hit it. I didn't see much after that. Um, I think it should last for at least a few days. Um, I can send Esther and Henry into town to get more oil sent in um, I'll go I'll go into town and make sure that happens uh, if I can ask the three of you to help you've already helped too much damn I, I never thought this was gonna happen at my age we'll do all we can to help it, it would be wrong to not We'll find her if we can. Yeah. I don't know what they have in mind. I remember Clarice telling me that they used to do... Well, they used to take sailors off of boats. Most of the sailors never made it back, and those that did weren't all there. Sometimes they're ransom back, I think, to wealthy ship captains, but I don't think that happens much anymore. They also looked a little bit odd. Not that I've seen too many of these things up close. Not that I've seen any of them up close. And he kind of looks over at the, the store still sizzling body that's sitting there. Uh, somebody give me a hand getting these things out of here. It's starting to stink up the place. I'll give him a hand and explain that don't touch the bleeding parts because they hurt. And he puts on some heavy gloves. Yeah. Uh, that probably are used to work on the the light itself. There's like spare gloves down here. Even then, you can see slight wisps of smoke coming up off of them as they're 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 slowly getting eaten, but they're thick enough. Uh, Angus is is slowly recovering himself, but um, he hasn't actually uh, cleaned the blood off the wound from his head. Um, uh, nor kind of, well, he's dri dried out a little bit thanks to uh, Silas. Um, Esther and uh, Henry. Um, Esther actually takes charge of Henry and gets him to start cleaning things up and rearranging things again. Um, Henry keeps looking over at the three of you and there's a sort of silent worry in his face, but every time he seems to be just on the edge of kind of realizing exactly what's happened with his mother, uh, Esther kind of uh, berates him and tells him to go clean something up. Um, you get the impression that she's trying to keep him busy. Um, they do welcome you to stay for the evening. They have extra beds. They don't have extra beds normally, but they do right now. Um, and uh, it's it's a kind of somber evening. Uh, Angus sits by the... by the uh, Actually, he takes a, uh, one of his chairs out onto the back deck and sits out there smoking and you find him there in the morning as well kind of half awake staring out at sea uh, I would like to when it's time to put Henry to bed um, I would like to sing him a lullaby if that's possible okay um, Henry and Esther are going to share a bed tonight 
Henry doesn't feel like he really wants to be alone. That does leave the smallest bed free. Um, actually, Henry would be in his own bed, and Esther would be kind of curled up beside him, but also um, kind of encouraging you to, to sing the song. What's the song? Yeah. Like? Um, it would it would probably be a lullaby that uh, Helena would have sung to me. Okay. What's the uh, What's the general gist of the of the story and the, of the lullaby? It would probably be something uh, like to keep bad dreams away and to you'll have a good day tomorrow and you, you can't have a good day tomorrow if you don't get your sleep. <laughs> something like that. Make a performance check. Not that this is a high pressure performance, but you know. Silas will uh, assist. Okay, let me do it with advantage then. It's also probably something that Silas wouldn't know. No, he's just. Uh... Make a history uh, check, actually. 15. Make a history check for Silas. Did we say 15 or 16? Uh, 15. 15, okay. All right. Yeah, you're not familiar with the song. Um, it has a very uh, kind of old style to it, and there's there's words that are used in the song that would not be sung to a commoner usually. Um, Henry has that look on his face every once in a while when he hears something, and he's like, I don't know what that was, but it sounded pretty. Um, uh, Esther kind of smiles, and, and you, you get the impression uh, from both of you that Esther's vocabulary is far better than probably the rest of the family. Uh, she's definitely the reader, as you've already discovered, but whenever she's had an opportunity, clearly she's talked with merchants and with anybody she can um, to try to, to expand her, her frame of reference. But it is an old song, and it feels like one that, that definitely didn't come from around here. There's talk of uh, green rolling hills, which is not a feature you find in this area. There's talk of, of kind of duty for, for, uh, for the, the kingdom, which is not a sentiment that's very commonly spoken in Aelthwater. While they're not, you know, disloyal to the kingdom, that's all the way over there. <laughs> and usually not thought of too too deeply. Um, Henry kind of kind of smiles and, and you see him nodding off and he, it's it's one of those cases of a, of a child who doesn't want to sleep or feels like they shouldn't sleep, so it's like nod off, wake himself up, nod off, wake himself off, but inevitably he kind of uh, sleepily kind of lays down um, Esther kind of holding on to him he kind of leans into her uh, and when the song is finished um, you think he's asleep and then there's one last you sing real pretty and Esther kind of mouths a thank you to you um, you leave them to, to rest yep. Jonas is upstairs for the entire evening um, and um, how, is Jonas wounded at all or because oh, if we're going to have a long rest, I'm going to cast the Cure Wounds on both Angus and Jonas if he's injured. Uh, both of them are definitely injured. Okay, um, yeah, they're each going to get 1d8. And I, I won't bother like rolling for damage and heals. Cause, yep. Yeah. You get the impression neither one of them is having a normal night's sleep, though. Uh, Jonas, actually, after about an hour... Um, and actually, if you're up there, Medric, he'll act actually ask you to help a couple of times um, to yeah. move some things around. Yeah, and, I'll do that. Um, make a... Make an acrobatics check. For lifting? Nope. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that is not as good. Clank, 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 clank. So <laughs> as you're helping him rearrange the tower and trying to get it straightened up again, uh, one of the supports is broken on it, and he didn't realize just how badly broken it was until the thing turns or folds over a little bit. Some of the oil spills down onto your shoulder, and when you look over at it, um, you realize that the, the small, weird flames that have been licking at your eyes actually ignite the oil, uh, and you find yourself on fire. And then you sort of calmly pat the fire out, and he looks at you and, and, and just kind of in amazement. Um, just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's not burning you nearly as much as, as he might expect, and you're kind of just calmly putting it out. I, that's... You're good to have around right now. Um, because I'm going to need to do a lot of fire, and I'm, uh, well, to be honest, fire itself is a little bit scary to me. And he kind of figuratively leans on you to help him put this back up. Um, okay. make for me, uh, what do we want to call this? 
I need a character sheet. Give me a character sheet. I have character sheets. Uh, you don't have them there. All right. I would like a... Hmm. You can choose to make an Arcana or a... Hmm. Call us a survival check. One of those two. Survival. Wait. Okay. What did I roll? Oh, uh, that, that was bad. That was not great. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you're kind of trying to understand what he's saying, and he's describing a whole bunch of things, and you, you feel he gets kind of caught up and caught in the, the mechanics of what he's trying to build and describing it. Uh, and it takes an extra hour to kind of, between the two of you, put it back together. You feel like um, he had an instinct for how it was, but he was listening to you because you clearly know fire better than he does. But unfortunately, at one point, you spill some of the oil. Um, the oil now is kind of soaked into the wood a little bit, and he's a little bit nervous about it. So he takes an extra cautious uh, uh, approach at putting up the tower and uh, feeding the oil to it. Um, he estimates they've lost about a day's worth of oil, which basically means they have about two days worth on hand. Uh, it was a pretty bad spill. Uh -oh. And he's going to have to stay here to make sure to watch it. Fortunately, one of the other barrels they have here is water, so he can make sure that it keeps from, from igniting, at least until it's, uh, it's uh, out. Um, but between the two of you, sometime in the wee hours of the morning, he does manage to get the tower lit. It's not nearly as bright as the stone was before. Um, but when he puts the, and in fact, when the light is kind of adjusted through the, the crystal covering, um, even he can look at the light without too much problem. It's no, it, it doesn't carry for you any, any of the mystical power the previous one did, nor is it nearly as, as strong. But it does seem to, to start to move again. Um, and... Uh, he cranks the, the horn as well, which kind of runs a, a low moan. Um, as you look out to sea, you can see that the storm has kind of abated somewhat. Uh, and he does point out, he's got really good eyesight, he does point out a couple of the ships that are out there and seem to have diverted away. I hope we've avoided the worst of it. And uh, I'm worried about my wife. It's understandable. And just seems to think he's she's alive. So, if we go searching for the stone, we'll find her if she, if we see her. We'll bring her back if we find her. I, I can't say how much this means to me. I'd go with you, but I have to make sure this. I have to make sure that the, the light doesn't burn this whole place down. <laughs> I knew that I would be responsible for this uh, entirely someday. I mean, Angus. Uh, I always said that would be the case, but I, uh, uh, it's a lot, you know. And he kind of uh, sets up a chair by the fire. I, Are you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Morning's a few hours away, so I don't think I could sleep oh. if I wanted to right now. Uh, we just saw the time or we'll realized how late it was. I'm up a lot of nights. It's the nature of this whole enterprise. I mean, sometimes you need to have the light during the day, but most of the time. Most of the time, it's a night job. Doesn't mind. I don't mind that too much, but... Oh, well, and he looks up at the, the hole. Gonna have to get that fixed. Hope it doesn't rain before then. I, I'd hate for this place to get flooded. Uh, you can um, you can take my room downstairs. Mine and Harriet's. Uh, we won't we won't need it tonight. All right. Well, thank you. And between the three of you, um, does Silas want to do anything else for the evening? I would also like to do one last thing. Okay. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll have Silas first. You had a chance to to do the yep. thingy earlier. Just check in on Silas. Um, well, if Annie's is a short thing, she can do that first. That's fine. 
I just want to check if the book is anywhere around. Okay. Uh, you easily find it in the same room that Esther was in. It's kind of was it was knocked to the floor and kind of uh, fell half under the bed, but easily found. Um, I'll take a look at the later part of the book. Okay, so you're going to spend some time reading. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you more detail about that next week. I think. Um, yep. Silas. Um, he's going to take the compass and go out the back of the place. Okay, that's where uh, Angus is is sort of sitting and smoking and staring out to sea. Um, and he's going to, to check the direction the compass is pointing in and see if he can figure if there's a... Like, is it pointing towards the middle of the bay? Is it pointing off the the point of the the inlet or is there any particular area that it seems to be pointing to um make a navigational tools check so i'd say this is probably bleh, intelligence based yeah so, that's what i figured okay all right uh 13. as you're kind of out there and, and holding it out uh, and you move to both sides of the the smaller deck that's out there, which gives you a little bit of triangulation to allow you to figure out sort of the direction as much as possible. Um, it doesn't appear to be that far away um, because there's a, quite a bit of, of jumping um, in the angle of the uh, in the angle of the the, the compass point. Um, so even only in the what would that be about 25 feet uh, difference on this end. It does shift noticeably and so you kind of take a bit of bearings out there uh, it's probably no more than maybe a half mile maybe a mile away um, it shifts slightly as if it's moving but not it's it's not moving a lot um, if anything it's kind of moving in the same area uh, tightly it is further out to sea from here but we're rather than pointing back into the bay but even a, a, a half mile or mile away is not that much deeper. Um, yeah. This is actually right amongst the, uh, the Dead Man's Fingers, which is a, a set of uh, shoals that run along the shore here. One of the reasons that the lighthouse is here, actually. So it's not really that far away. Okay. Uh, Silas will come back in, and uh, whenever uh, Medrick and Annie are done, uh, he'll he'll uh, get them together at one of the tables. Uh, he'll ask Angus if he's got a map of the the local area. He just sort of uh, uh, nods. Um, on the shelf there, on the inside, there's a bunch of scrolled up maps. Okay, uh, Silas will put them out on the table and. And you do find there's a, there's a number of different maps that have been made over different times. Some of them are measuring, there's actually one that's a current map, like not as current as in now, but as current as in the flow of yeah. water that's out there, uh, a map of the, the dangers. Um, one of them um, uh, seems to have different marks, uh, little X's across the bay and uh, deeper into the water, and uh, what look like ship names written beside them and years. Uh, mm. as well as a, a general map of the larger Escus and a map of Icro there as well, which is nearby. Uh, I think I might know where they've taken her. And they'll point out the uh, the shoals on the uh, on the map. I think the compass is, for, is pointing here. How far away? About a half a mile. Shouldn't be too far to swim, but even if we can breathe underwater, we're not going to take any, not going to want to take anything that uh, might be a problem. You also uh, we'll know that they have uh, at least two rowboats. Yeah, I mean, we're likely to have to go in the water anyways. But... So was it just me or was the water colder? The second time around when we went in 
I didn't really notice. Did any of us feel that, or was that just a metric thing? It, it, when he mentions it, I mean, it was cold because it's water at night, but it wasn't any particularly different. Nah, it was water. I mean, I'm not usually one for for midnight swims, but that's both of us. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a, a quick bio break, but you guys can continue to talk amongst yourselves. Or let the cats do the talking. I also need a bio break. <laughs> BRB washroom is like right next to this room, though. Yeah, I think Silas is going to leave a lot of his stuff at the tower. Sorry, you said you were leaving your stuff at the tower? Yeah. Yeah, probably a good idea. He's got books and healer's kit, lantern. I don't think any of those are going to do us any good underwater. Exactly. That's why I left the my oil with them. I, uh... I also, I do have a journal with me, but it would be like wrapped in leather, so the rain wouldn't have affected it, but it's going to be staying here. Yeah. I also would have brought, need to mention that I would have brought that little crate of spices and stuff. Yeah. So... I would suggest maybe uh, if Angus is going to go to town to get oil, offer uh, that he use Blondie maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if he can ride, yeah. Yeah. But if he's getting a bunch of oil. Yeah, but yeah, he could bring the horse and cart. Yeah. Just things the brain will probably forget when we're actually talking about. Yeah. Back first, I win. Oh, that startled my cat. But startled by Timmy too. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, cats. She, she's just like sitting on the cot over there. Oh, she's got like a wonderful kitty condo. Oh yeah, uh, that, that is from Amazon. <laughs> Apologize, but, that was rather urgent and now I see we're doing uh, homes of the, the- Homes of the cats. Of the, yeah. the fast and furious. <laughs> I also went on a bio break. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're not gonna be going too much longer tonight. Was there anything that I missed that I needed to know about? Um. Uh, yeah, we're I gonna leave. We go back to get the little crate of coffee and stuff. Right. Bring that into the uh, the tower. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. Uh, and yeah, we're if Angus is gonna head into town, we might as well loan him the use of Blondie and the cart. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna be leaving my books and chalk and. Uh, yeah. Candles and healer's kit, all the stuff that's not likely to be any use underwater. Okay. Yeah, I, I will leave my, my notebook and stuff here too. Uh, Angus is actually going to stay with Jonas at the tower, but he's going to send mm -hmm. Esther and Henry into town. And Henry promises to take care of uh, Blondie. Uh, Fair enough. So you'll do good. And Esther kind of stops and, and looks directly at Annie, kind of stands up to Annie. Um, please be safe, and, and please bring our mother back. We'll do everything we can. I suppose... I suppose this will make a good story someday. Probably. 
Um, Who knows? Well, somebody well, might write stories about us someday. So for, uh, if we're going to possibly fight things underwater, did we keep the spears from the sea devils? You can gather I'm assuming them. that I have one of those. You can gather them. Um, I think all... Yeah. Uh, well, the two... Two of the the smaller ones had spears. The other one had that strange warhammer that had sort of yeah. holes in it. Uh, Medric, hmm. make a um, hmm. Let me call this a, a, a what do I want to call this? I don't know. I'm kind of I'm queer, kind of weirded out by the possibilities, but uh, let's let's uh, let's bring up a character sheet so I can see the the stats. Still haven't got that figured out yet. My character sheet? No, nope, mine. Uh, I just need to know the, the skills. I can never, I can never remember them offhand. I should be able to remember them. There's like sixteen of them or something, or tw or fifteen. Uh, uh, I'm gonna call this. Make an athletics check. Yeah, we'll we'll do it that way. Right. But don't use strength. Use intelligence. Wait, what? So uh, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not something you can click. Uh, just uh, roll uh, a d20 plus your intelligence bonus plus your proficiency. Okay, so that's minus one plus my proficiency is two, so that's plus one. Sure. I was so, like, happy when you said athletics, but now I'm less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you, the, the Warhammer's design is a little bit strange to you. Um, because it's it seems to be the head seems to be made of a very sharp and and he, or not sharp but very heavy and solid coral, and the whistling sound it makes through the air is uh, really strange. It still has plenty of weight to it, but it seems like it has a different balance, something you're not used to. Um, so you all have a long night's rest. Oh yeah, relaxing here. Even before you've woken up, uh, Esther has, has, has made uh, basically porridge for the morning. Um, something so they're all going to have their own uh, long, long day. Um, Angus goes and, and, and relieves Jonas upstairs uh, in watching and making sure that the, the, uh, the lantern is still lit, making sure that everything's still, still working up there. Uh, and Jonas actually kind of half collapses into his uh, porridge that morning. So, Esther and Henry are off. I would kind of help with cooking. Okay. Kind of being a big... I will do everything that I can to help, but it's not something that she does. <laughs> you get the impression that Esther is doing it almost out of out of memory now more than more than thinking too much about it she's watched her mother cook she's probably helped her mother cook quite a bit help um angus even uh cooking before um as you hear him kind of calling from over like don't do this don't do that make sure to add a pinch of salt make sure to you know that sort of thing um which displays some knowledge but at the same time y even that seems almost by by automatic reaction automatic action not not so much that he's engaged with it but esther's happy to have you uh kind of kind of uh, uh helping out a little bit it is a quiet and somewhat somber meal of course um angus is is kind of caught up in his himself he takes his porridge up with him when he goes upstairs um, jonas looks like a wreck he clearly hadn't slept all night which he kind of knew anyway but there's lots of creases of worry across his face um but he's also nursing the, the wound on his shoulder, and there's there are thin, although even now fading lines of uh, of acid burns across his face, where the claw had struck him. But you all go your separate ways. Jonas actually goes to get some sleep. Esther and Henry go out to Blondie, and prepare to make the journey into town. Uh, our, uh, Angus has told them to look for Varga. They seem Esther seem to know who that is. Silas, you're familiar with Varga. He's one of the the, the sort of uh, owners of a warehouse on the docks. Uh, tends to deal with a lot of uh, things that are shipped in, so he probably has oil on hand, which is what they're looking for. Um, so I'm just going to order a a a, a, a um, barrel of oil, large barrel, and um, gives uh, Esther a a, a 
small bag of coin, not a huge amount, mostly copper it seems. I was just kind of counting it out. Uh, look at uh, Esther and uh, take. Um, tell him that uh, Silas Mosh says uh, this is a this is an emergency. Uh, if we uh, can't keep, the, uh, we need this to keep this lit so the uh, the ships don't run aground on the shoals. She nods solemnly. And they set out. The tide is low at the moment, so they're able to just climb down and walk out. Um, Henry promises to, to pick a, a basket of apples for Blondie before they leave. So he'll be well taken care of. Do you have a brush? I could brush him. Uh, I do, but it's at home, unfortunately. I also have a brush to give each of them a dagger. Do you do that just like at the dinner table or are you sly about it at all? As they're leaving, I'm just like, look, just in case. Okay. Um, Esther takes it with a, a wide-eyed expression in her face, very uncertain, but also kind of surprised. Uh, Henry takes the dagger and immediately starts thrusting it out. Ha ha, he, ha, ha. Nobody better come near Blondie and me and Esther. Don't, uh, don't play with it, it's not a toy. And you, you but see if someone him. tries to hurt you, I'll hurt him right back. Exactly. Good kid. And uh, the two of them kind of go out. And again, uh, Esther kind of turns back and once again mouths, thank you uh, to you, Annie, um, as the two of them go out. I am two daggers dead. Uh, Angus turns to the rest of you before you're heading out. Take this boat. It's reliable. You won't wander too far. The currents where you're going, if, if your guess is right, are probably not that uh, not that swift right there. But be careful. The tide will come in and it will shift quite a bit. Uh, there is an anchor off the side of it. I don't know how deep you're going to be at, but at least drag. And if you don't mind, he kind of leans in towards Medrick in particular. Mm -hmm. Stab the bastards, would you? For me. With pleasure. You know, there was a time I'd go with you. I'm getting too old for this. In this place... And he kind of pats the, the wall fondly. This place needs me. If I leave that other boy in charge, burn the place down before tomorrow. You kind of get the half-joking nature of it. Still, he fell in love with Harriet, so he can't be all bad. Uh, the kids are going to miss her pretty bad. So bring her back in one piece. We'll do everything that we can. You know, she, she either has her mother's eyes, and that mane of red hair, I can see it in Esther, too, and Henry. That's the... That's the best thing never came into, no, into my life. Except for Clarice. Um... I can't... I can't say how much I appreciate you doing this. If you hadn't have been here... Well, I suppose you'd be going after me, too. Anyway, and he kind of spits on the on the uh, the decking. Not for that horse shit. Go save my daughter, would you? There's there's no use fretting on what could have been. We have to focus on what's now. Yeah, we'll find her and bring her back. We do that. So he gives you a little rowboat. It's got four oars. So two of you can row at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the compass, which should lead you in the right direction, more or less. The tide is high at the moment when you climb into the rowboat. We expect that by the time you get out there, uh, the tide will have already started to shift down to almost lower tide. 
Angus gives you a bit of a warning. Watch out for the fingers. They'll want to grab you. But if you keep an eye about you, you shouldn't be able to, or should be able to navigate around those rocks. Maybe even tie the boat to one of them. Yep. <laughs> you head out to sea? Yep. Yep. Yes, I'm so, sorry. this is a skill challenge to end off today. You'll need to navigate your way there. You need to make sure you get around safely around the rocks. And you also make sure that the, well, hopefully, that the boat is not gone by the time you're finished. <laughs> so what would each Are of we... you like to contribute to that? Um. Well, Silas, you're the one who can read the compass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I either can do navigation or water vehicles, but my navigation's better, so. Yeah. Uh, I can do, like, the oars in the back, so it'll be, like, strong, go. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll do the the other ones. I don't have any proficiency in anything useful for rowing a boat. Okay, so, Andy, you probably will keep watch for the uh, for the shoals, make sure the boat doesn't get crushed, cut, cut up on them, or find a good place to actually tie up. So uh, yep. that's Nav to Tools roll. That looks good. Uh, Andy, I'll need a perception or... Um, yeah, perception from you and Medric. Uh, straight up athletics. All right. Not with intelligence this time. <laughs> 16. Okay. Oh, I closed my character sheet. Damn it. <laughs> I'm used to playing characters that can see everything and purposefully made her so that she can't see anything. So, uh, good and, roll. And yet, still a 16, so. Nope. She sees what she needs to see. Oh, okay. So, uh, that's one failure. As you're moving outward, Silas, you're you're kind of kind of like what you were doing at shore, where the the um, going out with the family to fish, you learn a lot of the tricks of the trade, and one of them is if you have one bearing, you you don't know where you're going. You only know where you've been. If you've got two bearings, you know where you're going to get to. And if you get three bearings, you know how you're going to get there. So you've got your, you kind of indicate for the, the, the rowing to go back and forth a little bit so you can see how the shift in the compass goes. And you've got a decent idea of where you're zoning in on that. Andy, you're watching over the edge of the boat just to make sure that uh, you don't run into any of the shoals. You take one of the, the oars and kind of gently push away just to nudge the direction of it a little bit. Um, rather than at the back with a tiller, which is really where Silas is, you're kind of at the front with the the uh, the pushing uh, off stuff. Yeah, as you could, because you have to navigate this carefully, and you kind of get the impression too, like as the, as the tide drops lower and lower, uh, even rowboats would have difficulty getting through the shoals. But when the 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 tide is at full height, the shoals are almost invisible. Uh, making this probably the, one of the most treacherous places around for any ship traveling through here. They wouldn't even notice it until they were already too too much on it. Medric, you put your back into it, and you start rowing harder and harder uh, until at one point you hear this snap, and you look over at the right oar, and you've broken it off just at the wrong angle trying to push too hard on it, and you actually break off the oar, and you see the paddle of the oar floating out to sea. Uh, you're down one oar, from where you were. Thankfully, there were four. Uh, maybe it must have been just yeah. It must have been stress on the ore already. Maybe it was broken. Who knows? Maybe it was sabotage. You're not really sure. So sea devil. This entire thing was organized by Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Never liked that daughter anyway. Uh, so you can try again. Um, all of you can roll again as this kind of puts you off of the track you were on and gets you a little closer to those rocks than you meant to be. The difficulty goes up now to 15. Oof. 12. 20, nice. Athletics again? Yep. Unless you can think of something else you'd like to try. Oh, unfortunately. Uh, Silas, the, the, the shifting of the tides and the shifting of the, the waters around these particular shoals are making the navigation even harder and when you just figure you've got it all 
uh, Annie calls for a turn in the front and shoves hard on one of the rocks, spinning the, the rowboat around, causing you to lose your bearing somewhat. Uh, and on the other side, uh, struggling to try to keep up, Medrick ends up kind of wedging one of the uh, one of the the left hand oar this time in between some rocks, and it takes some time to clear it out. Unfortunately, you're now a bit spun. Uh, the fog is starting to fill up a little bit, and even the uh, lighthouse, you can just barely make out the flame. Uh, nowhere near as bright as it had been before. One more round, guys. Difficulty remains at uh, 15. There we go. That's better. That's much better. That that is an eighteen. Okay. And oh, Navjules was seven. I, just, I missed that one. Mm -hmm. All right. This time you're having difficulty finding your bearings, uh, but um, up front, uh, Annie kind of spots a couple of rocks you pushed off from, and you start to re-angle the boat in that direction. And suddenly you hit open sea, and with a powerful thrust, uh, Medric, the front of the boat actually comes up when you finally find a way to get, get your groove. You actually manage to plant the, the oars this time on a couple of rocks that Annie pointed out, and the whole thing gets sort of jolted forward up out in open, in open sea. Zoom. Uh, as you look at it and as you kind of hold the compass out in front of you, uh, Silas, you realize why you were confused. Because the compass no longer points in a particular direction, but begins to spin. Whatever you were looking for, the stone must be beneath you. And that's where we're going to end for tonight, as you take your, your travels deep under the water. It's going to be cold. Yeah. And by now, Medric, your uh, your spare sight has gone away. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for playing. Thank you for uh, joining in. If you were watching live, I didn't actually remember to bring up Twitch. So if you were actually talking to us on Twitch, I apologize. I completely missed that, unfortunately. Uh, I knew there was something I hadn't opened. Of all the 15 windows I have opened, there's going to be something at least. Um, if oh, you... it was so nice to go actual dice. It's true. It's uh, true. Uh, everything is a little bit odd. If you enjoyed this, then thanks. Um, uh, hopefully, you would like to join in in enjoying this even further. You can talk to us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Legends of the Drowned Isles. That's where we'll post uh, kind of announcements of any kind that we might have, which we have in a moment coming up. We also have uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles, which is intended for people who want to gather together and chat about things. It's been a little quiet lately. I've been keep I keep meaning to kind of throw things out there, but I feel like as the GM, I would get perilously close to to spoiling things more for myself than anybody else. <laughs> but I will try to occasionally put things up there. Um, you, if you watch this on Twitch, then and you maybe you tuned in late, then you can catch up. You can go to YouTube, YouTube.com/ENCAF1 which is where you can find this uh, and, and all these episodes and the, gosh, I don't even remember how many episodes there were of the uh, the original game, which will hopefully be returning back when quarantining is just a laughable joke of the past. <laughs> um, but at least for now, you can catch up on those episodes. It's like we're avoiding things like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are plague plot lines that I had wanted to introduce in the game, and now I just want to bury them. Um <laughs> I want to well, there was one in the game. I know. I want to vaccinate my game against the plague. Uh, <laughs> if you are um, watching this on YouTube, you can watch live. Um, what we have decided to do is move our time to Sunday mornings to try to avoid the heat, which successfully we did today. Actually, it was supposed to be really hot today. I was really worried, and it's only really muggy as opposed to actually being really hot, so I'm very happy for that. We stream on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 on Sunday mornings right now, starting at 11 a.m. Atlantic time. That is, uh, let me see, 10 a.m. Eastern, and I think like 7 in the morning if you're in California. If you're in California and you're willing to get that early, then hey, we can be your breakfast show. How about that? 10.30 in Newfoundland. <laughs> That's right, you know, 11.30 in Newfoundland. also want to thank uh, George84. Um, I've made an effort to increase the exposure of the wonderful artwork that George did uh, of the characters. Uh, you, can see little, you can see the little portraits yeah. there. Uh, the portraits are also on the main screen. You find a link to his work in the closing screen as well. Uh, and uh, I, I want to I add more art as well. 
Uh, music in the uh, title sequences, by the way, is from uh, from uh, Kevin McLeod uh, in Competech. And finally, uh, next weekend is a holiday. It happens to be New Brunswick Day weekend, which means a lot of people are out doing things or in doing things, as has become the new norm for a lot of people. Uh, I'm actually thinking of attending Gen Con virtually, which is something I haven't been able to do, attending Gen Con at all for years, so I'm kind of excited about that. But that does mean that we won't be running next week. So the next game will be on the 9th of August. Imagine that. Did I forget anything, guys? No. Subscribe. That's right. If you're going to be on YouTube, then subscribe. Oh, and ring the bell. You can subscribe on Twitch, I think, as well. Uh, I know less than I should about you can that. Follow. Yeah. Yeah, you can follow. That's it. All right, folks. Uh, have a great day. Thanks again to my players for sticking with it and fighting off these terrible sea devils. And we shall see you all again in two weeks. Enjoy. See ya.